ladies and gentlemen. Now introducing the most alpha man you've ever met on the Down to Get Weird podcast. He's conquered Spain three times. He once ate an entire alligator alive. And now he runs a small book club in the suburbs of Omaha, Nebraska. His name, Matt Lena. And uh, that was the best intro that's we've probably had on the podcast. Welcome to the Down Get Weird, Down Get Weird podcast. I don't know if that's like the not only the best intro, but I might I'm I just might be the best guest of the Down to Get Weird podcast. That is up for debate, but we can uh, we'll let the we'll let the viewers decide. Hey, I'm not I'm not saying anything, but I'm just saying, bro. Okay. Well, <laughs> you look homeless. Technically, this is, a, this is not a homeless look. You are homeless. This is style. See? This is my new guest. My guest, Matthew Lena. I'll, I'll give him a little clap. Matt Lena. You're welcome. Uh, was in Asia with me for eight months. I mean, eight months Seven, I was there. Seven ish? Eight? Seven, the whole eight. time you were there. Yeah. Um, yeah, met him in college, wrestled together, and then we, went, yeah, I don't know. He transferred. he transferred. He well, transferred. He, you just got back. So, Matt, Lena, you were in Asia for 14 months? 15. 15, 15 months. Mm-hmm. Um, you ended in Indonesia. So, we split apart in the Philippines. I w- went home. You went – well, I went to Taiwan. You went to Indonesia. Well, I went to – no, we did uh, – Philippines was the last place. Philippines, and then you left. I and went then, to Taiwan, and you went Yeah, to I think Indonesia. we went to – no, we went to Vietnam, didn't I? Or no, we went to Indonesia for a month. I don't know mo- you No, went. Indonesia for a month. Vietnam for two m- months. Where'd you go in into Vietnam? Me, because remember me and Jake, Jake and I. Where'd taught. you go? Again? Mm-hmm. You taught for the yeah, same. Yeah, we taught time. for two months. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, we were there for in Saigon for two months. Then he went to Australia. Or no, no, no. He went home, and then I. What did I? And then I went from Vietnam to Indonesia, and I was in Indonesia for like four and a half months. So. Okay, here's my number one question. I, was, I thought you were going to go to jail in Indonesia because I was like, I don't think Lena knows you can't just stay in a country for like a certain amount of time. No, no. So I have I – have How did you do the visa thing? So – and did it's you, the I, same – How long do you get on arrival? A month? You get 30 days. But then uh, – so I worked with the dive shop that I was going to work with, and they helped me get what's called a soci- social cult- sociocultural visa, which gives you six months. Um, so basically uh, you get 60 days and then every after 60 that? days, uh, 50 bucks. So I just sent my passport in cause I'm going back to Indonesia. So I just sent my passport into the Chicago consulate and then they'll issue the same thing. But I did it when I was living in Vietnam at the time and process says processed it at the, the embassy there. Uh, so, okay. So yeah, it's, and then, so you get 60 days on arrival and then every, month after that you give it basically to the like an agent and they stamp your passport like oh leaving and nice. entering and so the did you do that in nusa panita no no you can't do it in indonesia so you have to leave the country and then you can so where would you go every 30 days no i didn't know to get the visa you can't be in indonesia you have to leave the country get the visa and then oh, come back in okay um and they have single multi-entry so Visas are like I think the most complex thing about traveling. Like the it makes sense though. Like the like when we had to burn the flight in Sri Lanka. Oh, in India. To India, yeah. Yeah, so we we're in Sri Lanka trying to go to India we we're flying to Goa. So this was what was weird about that is we were trying to get it and we had 4 days till the flight and it was like 4 days out, so like the processing time. For four days, for like under four days, it was gonna be like three hundred fifty bucks, and we're like, okay, well, we're not gonna pay that. And so I messaged him. I was like, hey, we're gonna leave in four days. Can we just like get this now and also like for the cheaper price? And the cheaper price was still like two hundred bucks. And I'm like, two hundred dollars for a visa to India? And then they're like, yeah. And so I called them or I messaged them, and then they're like, oh well, you know. I was like, I heard you can get them cheaper, like. And the flight, uh, like the flight like was like one hundred and twenty bucks. Yeah, like the flight was cheap. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, and so I remember just asking them, and then they, uh, they, I was like, that's too expensive. Like, we're not gonna go. Like, if it's if it's actually gonna be that much, and they're like, 
well, that's the price. And they're like, okay, well, then we're just not going to go. And then they're like, oh, well, I guess I can do it for cheaper. And I'm like, what? Like, I don't think, I don't know. I just think that's pretty sketchy. Yeah. Like, why, why would something now, like a, a visa with a consulate be now? Yeah. And then they negotiable. literally just talked it like, I was like, well, mm, I mean, no. I was like, wait, so can it be cheaper? I was like, I don't know if we're going to go. Like, this is a pretty weird process. And they literally messaged me back and they're like, okay, well, it'll like be even cheaper than that. And they said it was like 90 bucks. And I'm like, well, we already bought flights to another country, so we're not going to do this, but this is still real sketch. I don't know, real weird. Asia's an interesting. Yeah. India's India's interesting as well. So, oh, I've never been thanks to the visa. But so what did you do in Indonesia? Give me a what did you do the first month? So so the reason and this I just still don't really know. I'm not what you would call good at planning or understanding. All right, I mean, I was with you how, for how Eight long? months? I kind of got that. I'm kind of a winger. I'm going to grab water. You keep talking. So I got to Vietnam, and I was kind of thinking, like, what's the next move for me after Vietnam? And so after arriving to Vietnam, um, started doing some teaching, which is kind of a common thing, especially for Westerners. Um, but then after I was teaching, I was like, okay, what's next? Like, I'm only going to be here for two months. I don't know what I'm going to do. And so – decided to do my dive master because i dove in indonesia uh when we split um with uh good old bottom gag and then him and i dove together a little bit and then oh yeah in indonesia because yeah yeah him him and then jake was also in indonesia and so i spent five weeks four weeks in indonesia and then i left um to go back to vietnam with jake so then i was like well maybe i'll go do my dive master like i really like diving there um then i turned out basically got an offer like not like an acceptance to say like hey come do your dive master with us um because you pay for your dive master so and i was actually looking at doing it in thailand which is kind of why because i want to get an underwater in photography Kotao? but yeah is no the uh cheapest place to do it so kopi pete oh really but yeah kopi kotao is like really actually bad diving like it's it's good diving but it's not can like you're not going to become a good diver I'm probably offending a ton of di- the dive community by saying this, but you if you come from Koh Tao, you might as well say like you're a Lincoln East wrestler because it's just like <laughs> basically means that is you're so insulting. But bottom of the barrel. Um, we just I mean I think our state the championship trophies. Bottom and, oh, we've got runner up for years, but but literally Koh Tao, top two. Koh Tao is like kind of the. That's like the farm. It's a factory. So, like, if I hear that you're from Kotao and you, like, did your DM there, I don't trust you as a diver. Okay. But. Well, okay. All right. Um. So, did you – how much is a dive master? Or did you do photography for it? It was, like, a 1000 bucks, But – Oh, and you paid for it. Yeah. Uh, Like, and I helped with some, some media stuff, like, for – Is that cheaper than in Kotao? Or is that – uh, It's probably a little bit – I would say cheaper. I don't. I don't know what the cost is in Kotal, but the diving quality and just overall like training was way better. Um, so did you dive every day? Yeah, every day, seven days a week. I lost from diving. I probably lost from the time I was in Vietnam. I was probably like two ten. I lost like fifteen to twenty pounds for over four and a half months living in. Indonesia. Is it ever cold? No. That's good. I don't. Uh, the last two months, I didn't wear shoes or a shirt, other than when the owners of the shop told me. Water. Oh, the water's cold. Yeah. Oh, dang. Uh, so there's two in the ball. Ba- it's the Balinese Sea and the Indian Ocean, and they meet in the center. And the Bali Sea is like 27 degrees Celsius. Celsius. And then the Indian Ocean's like anywhere from 17 to like 23. Hmm. I've had days because so I got in like a motorbike slide out, which is where I got this really cool scar on my hand. And my chest and some other spots. Um, but I nice. couldn't dive with a wetsuit. And there were days where it was 17 degree water. And I'm like, this is colder than my body temperature. And I can feel my body shutting down. So you just don't think So do you it. have to not do it? Or did you just be like, nah, no, good you just, for today? No, you just do it. I'm just like this. I'm like, well, this sucks. I'm gonna be did cold. you have a motorbike in Indonesia? Yeah, I rented one. Uh, just a company from mainland Bali. How much? Oh, I paid 800,000 rupiah. Which is? Which is the equivalent of like 60 bucks a month. 
something like that, but it's cheaper. So if you do oh, 60 bucks a month, that's yeah. not bad. If you go to, cause like a million is like 70. So, cause 14, one is the normal exchange rate. But, um, I would say if you live in Panita or you're going to Panita and you want to stay. So 13,000 is a dollar. No, a 14. Well, it's 13, seven. Are you using XE? Ye something, some currency. Thirteen. Po- I mean, it fluctuates every day. Yeah, I mean, it's and normally like fourteen is a good exchange rate. Is normally what I say. But yeah. um, so basically, yeah, like sixty bucks a month. But if you're living in Panita and you want to stay long term, I would recommend renting a motorbike from Bali because because it's an it's the same concept as like Hawaii. Like everything's more expensive. You got to ship it in. So like you rent a motorbike and from Panita in Panita, you're gonna pay more. So can you just rent it in Bali and then bring it yeah, over? Yeah, you got to, like, get on a ferry or, like, some big barge. Do you have to, barge. like, take it back each month? No. So I had a weird – I have a guy that just – his dad lives in Panita. You got a guy? And he – You got a bike guy? I got a bike guy. And he – I need an Indonesian bike guy. His his dad lives in Panita, and so I would just – his dad would come by once a month and I'd pay him. So. Oh, but, that's nice. But it's nice. It was uh, – it's weird living on a, a beach. Like, I've never – were you were you in a hostel? No, I had like a hut. It was like a was like that a shed. provided by the dive school? No, I had to pay for it. How much was that? Like a hundred and fifty bucks a month. What'd you have? You got any pictures of it? Uh, I do. That's on my phone though. Uh, oh. it, imagine Airdrop here's it here's what I would say. Here's what I would say. Imagine like a normal size shed, like a an American. Yeah. You're a you're married. You have three kids and a Labrador. You okay. you're in your second home. It's not your first home. It's not a it's not one of the start homes. It's like a second home, and it's got a proper yard. Because of the proper yard, you now have a shed. Oh, right? gotcha. So it's that one of those. it's one of those. It's like a so proper it was just shed a bed, basically. And there was a toilet. And I showered oh. with ocean water. So the shower was ocean water. Yeah. And I don't know how. Bend, yeah, I think they just. I don't know how you. Mm, interesting. But it was very, uh, very livable and good Wi-Fi, which was the other thing that killed me. My first place. Oh, wait, it was good did, Wi-Fi or yeah, bad Wi-Fi? Well, good. I could stream Netflix. So it was good. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Like good enough, good enough for what I'm trying to do or. Need. So how often would you dive a day? Twice a day. Sometimes three. <laughs> Every Were you day. ever like, I really don't want to dive right now? No. Really? It's kind of like FOMO. It's like so because uh, everyone's doing it at the same time. Well, and yeah, like and all the dive schools all go to the same sites, and like whether you're on different islands like Limbogan or Chenigan, like they all come to the same dive sites, and then someone will see something cool, and then I'll hear about it, and then I get really upset. So like, like what? Like so I um. What would they see that's cool? A example would be I th- I think it was when I got hurt, so I popped like a blood vessel somewhere in my face or something like that because I would dive and I would come back up and my mask would be full of blood. Which, if anyone knows this, and you can help me out, I don't know what happened, but uh, I'm, I'm I was a getting a little nervous. Scientologist. I got <laughs> what's this? Tom Cruise just popped in my head. <laughs> I I would come up from dives and I would just like literally just half my mask would be blood. And so, so is it act like? Because I think so. My in my sinus bleeding. My sinus something would like you bleeding out like, of your nose. Yeah, yeah. While I'm underwater, and then. So I was like, all right, I need to take some days off. And like those like three days off, there were reported sightings of a whale shark that was like seven meters. And then in, there was a um, great white. Huh. And Ooh, the that great, would be scary. Yeah, four, and it was like four and a half meters. I'll send you the video. Sick. I was so mad. I was like, of course they would see that on the Where day. is the video? Who has it? It's on my phone. Dude, airdrop it to me right now. What are we doing, huh? Eh? I want to see this. Yeah, it's and it's you look at its tail and it's you ever just like so this it, hap- it happens a lot in diving. I say this a lot. You see something, you go like this. I'm I'm a bitch. <laughs> it's like when like meeting Brock Lesnar for the first time, like that's oh, got to yeah. cross your head at least at at a minimum one time where you're yeah. like this. This dude could literally, I think he could he could snap my arms off. It's not a good feeling. And this is, this is one of your, like, like and you see. So who see, took this video? So this, uh, it's a guy named Ollie Underwater. Uh, he's a he's a videographer. Um, 
really nice. He has an A7 IV. Uh, Dude, huge, that's terrifying huge that you see a great wide. Yeah, and it's four are and a half meters. You watch the end of this video. Are they supposed to be in there? No, and it's like the only great white sighting like ever, like in the last however many years. Like, What? All right, let's watch this. Yeah. This is at 20, 25 meters, 22 meters, something like that. So it's like 70 feet. Okay. I don't know. If it's, is there audio? Wait, audio. Why would we need audio? But what? Yeah, look at this. Look at this. So all these, this is the most, one of the most popular dive sites in, so in would Indonesia. A great... And then look, wait, wait, when he goes, this is four, he's like four and a half meters. He turns, you see how thick his tail is, and you go like this. Um, <laughs> this thing could eat. So me. this is, where's this at? Look at that tail. Jeez. Ooh, it's just. It's like girt. It looks like a loaf of bread you buy from Hy-Vee. Oh, like, and were people like terrified? Yeah. Well, so there's like big school. We think because there uh, a lot of tuna come through, like in the channel there. So yeah. like big albacore tuna. Like I've seen a tuna like as big as you, and these things like when you're like trying to fight current and like swim, you're like, oh my gosh, this is kind of nerve wracking. You look over and you see a tuna, and he's just crew or like a barracuda, a cuda, and you go. I'm, I'm nothing. Is it get really like sketchy diving? I've only had one really scary. What happened? Uh, incident. It was with uh, we had two probably the most experienced group I was with. It was actually with my instructor, who Eric. I'm gonna tell the story. So, uh, it was two instructors, two dive masters, and two DMTs, which is dive master trainees. So we're at you this. A DMT. I was a DMT. So and I have over probably a hundred. 100 dives right now at this point yeah. um not now i have like 200 but then i was like 100 yeah so i'm pretty comfortable diving M most of the people in the group have dove in excess of three or 400 times yeah so we're at this dive site the one with the great white shark uh called crystal bay and this place is known for like really strong currents um uh, and where like do the, the they Indian just take you out to sea or or down or like um, like strong currents, like you hold on to something and your bubbles are going down. Like, yeah. So it's, uh, it can be pretty nerve wracking. Um, especially if you're in a group of Do people, people that die are, uh, often? not, I wouldn't say often. I'd say probably while I was there, there were like three deaths, four deaths maybe. And did you um, dive with those crews ever? Like, no, not where someone were, someone died. There was a local who had never dove before. Um, and just picked up a tank and went diving and killed himself. Um, how? Uh, didn't, I mean, didn't know how to, like, read the gauge or realize how deep he was. And then, like, ran ran out of air underwater. Jeez. And then, All right, so keep telling this crazy so, story. So we're in this in this popular dive site, and current picks up pretty strong. Um, we've gone around to kind of what we would call, there's an area, like, called the third corner. And it's pretty exposed, like, you're, you're facing the channel, um, which is where, like, you'll see big whales and like stuff that just they're cruising like it would be like the eac and finding nemo like you're in the channel when they're chilling with all the turtles it's like that i i've only seen finding nemo maybe once well so you yeah, know you know who else said that you know who else said that oh. ted bundy so ted bundy, so <laughs> ted bundy was for sure dead before finding nemo so and ted bundy kind of a bright guy so I'm a bit of a bundy guy myself we're we're in like pretty strong current and we're start we're starting to realize that like this current's not letting up um meaning like our bubbles like aren't they're not starting to rise so it doesn't like if i let go of this rock i'm not going to go upwards um which can also be bad because everything you do in diving you do slow like you can't go yeah super fast down you can't go super fast up like really yeah. slow so we're trapped in current um we're trying to find a way out and one of the dive masters uh has a panic attack and she starts breathing really heavy so like that's not good and she's a girl which normally girls breathe better um just because they're smaller and um so she has to share air with my instructor so now we have two people sharing air um me uh the other dmt and another instructor air? she no she's at a point where it's like critical like you need there's a point where you have to share air before you like basically empty your tank yeah um and so she, at this point, we're now starting to search for ways out. One of the DMTs, the other DMT, decides to ditch, makes what's called a CESA or an emergency ascent, um, and basically says, I'm out, takes off to the surface. Like just scared. Yeah, like scared. He was like, I'm scared. I've never, you could tell he was uncomfortable, takes off. I'm, me and uh, along with the other instructor or uh, the other DM 
are basically following the instructor who's sharing air and saying, all right, what are we doing next? Cause I'm like, I'm trusting you in the situation Yeah. as, as our air starting to continually go down and down yeah. and down and down. And so we're at like 20, 20 meters, which is like 60 feet. Yeah. 60 ish feet. And I'm, I'm at a, at my below my reserve. So 50 bar is your reserve. Like, and at that point, that's when normally in a normal dive, we would say this. Okay. Like, and normally at this time, 50 bar, I'm around 12 meters. So yeah. I'm like, okay, we'll keep working our way up. Like it's time. We're going to go up. You don't normally ever come back with much less than 50. So yeah. I'm at 50 and we're at 20 meters and there's no sign of like going upwards. So another like five to 10 minutes pass by and I can tell I'm starting to get really uncomfortable because I'm like, now I'm at like 30 bar. Are you, so and you're just staying in the same place. Uh, we're slowly kind of moving. We're kind of like trying to traverse because it's like a, it'd be like moving through a field, but you're like underwater. You're trying to like yeah. climb on rocks and do what you can because you got to get away from the current. Are you trying to go up? Uh, yes. If I mean, if possible, but you again, you can't. Like, if it's an up current, you don't want to get caught in an up current. What would have happened if you would have like got caught in that? Uh, current. like an up current, or well, this was just a a down current. It was kind of coming from everywhere. So, in the event of an up current, you wouldn't want to be caught in an up current because you're going to you'll ascend too. Yeah, you'll yeah. ascend too fast and run a higher risk of the bends. Yeah. Um, but so. Eventually, the other instructor ditches as well. Um, and so they it's just, me. they're just going up. Yeah, they're like, they're like basically no longer taking so, care of the group. It's kind of everyone's everyone fend for themselves. themselves. Um, so everyone's so, kind of freaked out. So yeah, and so it's me, the DMT, with the other DM who's, or the other DM whose girlfriend is sharing air with my instructor. And now we're still we're at like fifteen meters now, hanging onto a rock, and I'm at like less than thirty bar, between twenty and thirty bar. Zero bar is like you're you dead. have no air. You have no air. Yeah. So, um, like I look at him and I finally tell him I'm like, we need this is a sign for a board, like make an X with your arms, and I'm like, we need to get out of this situation now. Like, and you can't say that because you can't say that underwater. But yeah. with my eyes, I was like, I I don't yeah. I've never been this low. This is not a good thing. Like I'm not yeah. comfortable here. Um, and we're still at 12 meters. So, like 24. What did that be? That'd be like uh, 45, 36, 36. 45, 50 feet. Because it's a little over, a meter is a little over three, it's like 3.2 feet. If only there was a way we could. Internet. Let's calculate go. Calculate it. Let's go. 39 feet. 39 feet. So, so, like, he finally pulls off, gets what's called an SMB or surface marker buoy. It marks your position underwater so, like, boats don't run you over, which they still How do. How do you do that? Uh, with air. Or with Interesting to... yeah, or bubbles from your exhaust, like to save air, you would catch because as you exhale, yeah. you, your bubbles go up, so you just catch the air and send it up. Um, so we get it up, and I'm looking at my tank, and he at this point he's done sharing air because I'm assuming that he is either out or enough out where he can tell that he's about to be out because um, yeah. he has what's called a balanced first stage, um, and you won't be able to tell that it's it's getting less air. You can only see your gauge. So he's like, you could be in the middle of a full breath and go, uh, whereas like my regular regulator is a, um, unbalanced. So as less air comes like, or as less air is in the tank, I can feel that I'm getting less air. Like where his yeah. it puts the same amount, no matter what, until it's gone. Is that better or worse? Um, they say it's better. Okay. I think I prefer, I prefer the other. I mean, they're nice, but, um, it's probably better. There's probably other re I, I don't know enough about first stages other than I know the differences between a balanced and an unbalanced, hmm. but, but so then, um, we're starting to climb his rope. Um, that's so, attached to his SMB at the surface. So is an SMB really big? No, it's like, a like a wind sock, you know, like, um, basically like the same as your, your soccer scarves. Like you like that. Yeah. Like literally, uh, if you take one of those soccer scarves and inflate it, that's what it looks like. Oh. It's like a big sausage. So it probably took quite a bit of air to put that up there. Uh, like a little bit. Like a uh, I mean, if you, I can't remember if he used his exhaust or how he did it, but he got in it. Probably, I don't think, I don't even know if it was full. Like, um, and so that's like, if you're pulling up, it's not going to be coming down. No, it is. Like I've had, we've had situations where we were at five meters with an SMB attached to your BCD, which is like your jacket. Yeah. And we've hit down current that takes you from five to 20 meters. 
and so you're attached and it just pulls under the surface because it's so strong jeez like the ocean is a scary like yeah i have so much more respect for the ocean now what's because it called of an smb what does it mean surface marker buoy surface marker okay so and it just says like divers below or like it's normally a bright color like oh, okay I see um it. But so we're climbing the string, and he spits his regulator out and grabs my octopus, which is your secondary regulator, like if you have to share air, off of my my regulator and starts breathing from it. And I'm at, at this point, we're like six meters underwater, and I'm looking at my gauge. How, how fast can you ascend? Uh, 18, oh gosh, this is going to be bad. I believe it's 18 meters per second max, or per minute max. It's either nine or eighteen. I think it's eighteen. So you can eighteen. No, it's meters not. a second. No, eight eighteen meters per minute. Oh, okay. Let me wait. Wait. Let me think about that. No, it's nine nine meters per minute. That seems about more right. Per uh, nine meters per minute is the fastest ascent rate. I don't know why eighteen's okay. in my head, but um, or the rate of your slowest bubble. So your smallest bubble, like that comes out of your regulator you would follow that if your computer because you have dive computers like if your computer died or so we're at this point though we're kind of in the fuck it mode like ah uh, because he's sharing air with me the girlfriend dm and her boyfriend dm are sharing air on the other side of this smb and we're not even reeling things that we're just pulling the line because i'm i'm looking at my gauge and i'm less than 10 bar so i'm watching my like needle so what bounce. at 10 bar how much time you usually have if it's just you uh, m less than 10 minutes like m minutes like i don't mm -hmm. know like three or four minutes and how where are you and at? now I, we're in a panicked state and i am sharing air with my instructor <laughs> and we're trying to pull <laughs> pull this string and so he's out of there i think so he he spit his rig out or he's very close he's to being out yeah because you don't want to probably fully run out of air no and that's still have it in your mouth uh because then you're like yeah, you just don't want to spit the regulator out like normally. In that, un other than depending on your uh, like an emergency ascent, there's yeah. different techniques to that. But, but basically, I thought I was gonna run out of air, so like we were breathing, and I'm just holding my gauge as we're like all kicking, which is not good. But we're at the point where it's like, well, I'm either gonna die here or, and that, like we end up making it to the surface. Uh, the DMT that freaked out. Uh, we took him back to the harbor, and he didn't dive the second dive because he was so shaken up. Um, we, I dove. My instructor didn't dive. So when you go dive, do you like get back on board, change out gear, yep, and just chill, and then you're gonna go dive again? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So in between dives, while we're doing, you have to do what's called a surface interval, like to get the residual nitrogen out of your body. What's um, that? Because you're so you're breathing a you fart a lot nitrogen oxygen blend, <laughs> and you're taking in more oxygen than you normally would, um, and you're at depth, so you're you're breathing compressed air that's expanding your lungs. Yeah. So like you're exposing yourself to more nitrogen, and nitrogen like is so, a. So what are you doing while you're doing this thing? You're just chilling. Normally you're just chilling. Like just you're out. because breathing surface air, you're not breathing as much nitrogen, and that helps clear the nitrogen in your body. Gotcha. Like so. So to prevent the bends, um, to where you'd yeah. have to go to like a recompression chamber, which is like tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, if you get the bends, you have to go to a recompression chamber, or yeah, if you, you just like tough, like is there no. such thing as toughing it out? No, no. <laughs> you have to go back until the bubble. You got to go back down. No, you, you. But so they do it without you go into this chamber, and they basically take you back to where that nitrogen bubble can get small enough. Right, because air expands. Yeah. So they put they pressurize a chamber that allows you to to go in and take that nitrogen bubble and make it small enough to where it then, as you're breathing, will push out through your system, and then they slowly bring you back to sea level. So it could take hours. Like, you just never know. Like sometimes. And or wait, are you in water if you're in a decompression chamber? No. You're just like chilling. Yeah, you're just it's it reminds me of like. Did you a, bring like an Xbox in there? No, I don't think. Well, I don't. I don't think it could handle it. I don't know. Like you're pressurizing the air around you. So like, yeah, I know, but like. So I wouldn't think it would like mess up electrical components. Like if you had like a bag of chips, would it like smash them? 
I think so. I don't okay. know. I don't know. Like, well, like I've never, I've never well, been. When you go up in the mountains, if you have like buy a bag of chips, like at sea level, and you go up into the mountains, the bag yeah, of it'll chips like, is like expanded. Yeah, and it'll pop. Yeah. So I would ass- maybe the other way. I would assume, and because it's greater, um, the pressure ten meters underwater or thirty three feet or whatever it is is the same amount of pressure differential as earth so earth to 10 meters is the same as earth to a mile above the earth's surface so Uh, like going up that pressure differential is the same as 10 meters going down i hate going like i hate going like 12 feet in the water my ears start hurting i'm like this sucks yeah it's and i've been deep i've been deep bro I'm, I'm not saying I found. I'm not saying I found Bigfoot's bones, but what I hope Bigfoot that's what you know. Swim. That's my dying question. I hope you know, Bigfoot can swim. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. So I listened to uh, the Joe Rogan podcast the other day with the guy who was on Life Below Zero. Have you seen that? Yeah. Um, that was a good one. I, what's his name? Glenville, Glenville, and New York or something like that. Villa, He's a dude. Villa or something. He right. lives in oh, Alaska. Geez, and like just lives like in the bush yeah, like out yeah. by himself I've seen the, I, I, I watch i listen to the same podcast and so he started talking about bigfoot and the first thing that popped in my head was conspiracy theorist drew he's not like, a believer yeah he's not and here's so here's the thing and here's what i was i was starting to get on the i was starting to get on the bigfoot train like i was like okay maybe drew's got something to this like no one you know how do you get a guy like what's his name who's the guy that does the into the wild show or uh, uh, he does For, Survivor not, Man, and that uh, is Les Stroud. Les Stroud, yeah, Les Stroud. Like you're like the fact that Les Stroud believes, and he's it. doing, and he's doing a show now. He's got his own Bigfoot show. Yeah, which is kind of weird, but which, and that's what I'm like. People, he's losing people. I don't. And J- Rogan said it too. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. but I think Joe Rogan just says that because he's like, if you if you say, you're not gonna look dumb by say like making fun of Bigfoot people. Yeah, does that make sense? Like no one's gonna, but you're gonna come off. You're but gonna, if you, you if you lose, go the opposite way, yeah, you can lose people. He's like, That's oh, because like when there's somebody like when Les Stroud was on there, he was like all about it, and then as soon as Les Stroud like did Survivor Man Bigfoot, he's like, yeah, it's all crap. I'm like, why? Why did like you? I don't know. Which and so, so here's here's the my thing. thing. I was to do is to say Bigfoot. There's no way it exists. I was I was starting to agree. I'm like, okay, you know, no one's. Like, no one's seen one, but maybe they're, like, some elusive, you know, night creature thing. Yeah. Right? And no one – it's the same as the pterodactyl thing. Of, uh, I forget what book that's called. The pterodactyl. The... Uh, when that scientist wrote – what's it called? No, that's not a pterodactyl. That would be what we like to call a living dinosaur. That's a – I still still need... Mbimbi a dinosaur in the Congo jungle. It's like a plesiosaur that still lives. And I need to I need to, I need to listen or read that book, but – um, but he said this. I like, heard of it right there, bro. Joe, that's what they say. So, they that's a that. long, that's, that's the a picture that was neck. drawn. That's a long neck. It's a plesiosaur. Mokili M- M- is what my cat's name. Of the was. Congo. Moki. Yeah, Moki. Okay. Her you're, real name, her legal you're, name was Mokele Mbembe. You're. Hey, did de- you? Here's what you're sick. dead fat. No. Cat. Hey. Oh my. Ba- oh my baby. Oh, I miss my kitty. Dude, check this one out. Which so what? But what I'm saying is, Glenn said this. Glenn's been living in the Alaskan bush for like years, yeah. and he's never seen a trace. And now I hear, I hear the stories, and I'm like, yeah, like it's hard to make that up. And a lot of people maybe may or may not make stuff up. But what I'm saying is, what he said, no one's found anything ever. Like no bones. Okay. No, like, and I'm like, I just, I mean. There's some truth in that, you know. And after listening to that, it made me swing back a little bit more to the non. But you don't find Bigfoot. bear bones unless you shoot the bear yourself. Like, I don't know. I just I don't know enough about hunting or bears. Or- well, I don't either. But I've heard that from people are like, well, yeah, well, we know brown bears exist, and we don't ever find them. We, we you'll never find their bones in the wild. Which and it's unless just- you just shoot them and wait for their corpse to decompose, and you're right by it. I'm like, here's one. I'd say I'm. I'd say I'm 60, 40, no Bigfoot. That's where I'm at, 60, 40. I, I just think, I just, a guy like Les Stroud and like all these other people who aren't lying and they've proven they're not lying. 
Because why? What would you? I mean, they brought in, and I, I explained this up. They bring in like um, people whose job is to be able to tell if people are lying when they're being interviewed. They're, they're like, All right. Well, now I'm pissed. And those people are like, okay, by watching this person tell the story, they're not lying. Now, did they see Bigfoot? I don't know, but they believe they did. Which and, and that's, then it's like those people and like a lot of those people are like I've lived in these woods my whole life I never I thought it was a joke I made fun of people who said they saw it and then I saw it and it's like I hundred percent know that that's not a bear like it wasn't it's it's nothing that's ever been found what if so I'm like well that person's not lying and I believe them do you think like Bigfoot is out there at some point like I don't know if he has the ability to use technology I don't know if he has opposable thumbs but. He like goes to find podcasts or people like this that are like, oh, I don't believe it, and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show sh- myself. I'm gonna show myself, and I'm gonna. And then we'll he see, like, yeah. he's like the flasher in the office, but he, he only exposes himself to people who don't believe. Well, I pulled this up right over here. Check this out. This is what we would call the batut toot. <laughs> okay. All right. This is the batut toot, and it looks like you when you were born. It is this. It's so hairy. Is the Vietnamese essentially rock ape? So there. Where did no this? One had, where is? Where was this? this? Happened, like in no, the no. north. So during during the Vietnam War, U.S. soldiers had to go into these very rural parts, places where really no one lives. There's maybe a few. There's a village or something. Like we couldn't get there. You can't get there by car. You can't. You know. Who? You named? can't find these. And I, so they're like, well, we. The, the the soldiers would come back and be like, so we had this encounter with this thing that was throwing rocks at us. And, like, they were in firefights. And the Vietnamese, North Korean, or, sorry, North Vietnamese soldiers were, like, terrified of this thing. So they heard about it. Or, or, or they, they would encounter it, too. And they knew about it. And they were terrified of it. And they talked to the villagers. And the villagers were like, yeah, this is, it's called, that's the Batut Toot. And Ooh. so then the, the U.S. soldiers would go back and they would be like, uh, this is what happened. We ran into... These these things, these Did they, big apes. Were they able to stay straight faced when they said we ran into a batut? batut toot. <laughs> so I'm gonna name my next cat Batut Toot. Who, and then who gonna, comes and then up with the this? nickname is gonna be Batoodles. <laughs> you can't have a cat. You I, know, know. I know. I know. I know. I'm a bad person. Yeah. I can't, I can't be around. I, I so did. this is the Batut Toot. The Vietnamese they call it the rock ape because we just throw rocks at them. Um, but there was a lot of soldiers that. It kind of gave lo- statements on this, and there was just a video I saw on it. It would be like it's like a I'll send pre, you the video. Pre, uh, I'll put it. I'll put the the link to this video in the description. It's an infographics episode talking about the Batut Toot, and it's a cool name too. Oh no, it's got uh, look at the the those neon like glow in the dark things, the cameras where it's like you ever see that South Park episode where they make fun of people like that with they the, talk about ghosts and they're like. They have like the those type of cameras where it's like the night light vision or like night vision cameras, yeah. and there's like South Park episode making fun of people like that. It's really funny. You should check I haven't it out. seen it. I don't. I'm not. A, you know, he's I'm not like, a big South Park guy. Like there's, there's ghosts running down my. And he's like peeing himself. It's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah. Bigfoot wiki. Uh, old good old batoot toot. Uh, they found castings here's, of it. Hey, here's what. See, hey, they found castings. I will say this. And I've those seen. Cannot be. What I can fake. tell you, I mean, they can be fake, but a lot, not all of them are fake. One of the weirdest things about the ocean is like what we know, like two percent of the ocean. Yeah, that's why I don't do that. That's I why do... I'm like this. Like the reason that I'm forty, sixty, forty percent. Like at some point, I could be swayed to believe that Bigfoot is a real thing. Is that I've been in the ocean and I've seen things, and all that the only the only thing that comes to my head is this: What are you? I'm like yeah. I'm like this. I've never seen you like the other day, like the other day, like three months ago I was diving and I, I saw similar to that of like, a. have you seen the movie, how to train your dragon, how to train your dragon? No. Dude, you need to watch more movies. Not five. Watch more movies. Hey, niece and nephew. And you, I have, I have them and you have them. And your niece and nephew would appreciate it. Yeah, we watched the Lorax and Shrek. Hey, which is a good movie. You're still not going to get that Lorax tattoo. But so then look good uh it's like an underwater dragon it looks like this thing that's just cruising and i go no one's gonna believe that i saw this so luckily i had a gopro and i was filming and i go i don't know what i just saw and it was called a flying 
Gennard. If you go, yeah, Google image search flying, flying. I think it's G N A A R D or something like that. Flying Gennard. G N A A R D. Yep. It looks like a dragon. Look at this thing. It's a dra- and it spreads its wings and it looks like a f- oh, like what? Yeah. Now it's not very big. It's like the size of a frisbee. But I've never. Dang. It's like just cru. It looks like a baby dragon just cruising. Are there sea snakes? Yeah, banded coral snakes, and they'll kill you. What are they? Banded coral snake. Oh, oh no! You know what? Um, we were when you when we were in uh, Philippines on Malapasqua. When I went diving. You went diving, and I went and did that little like tour thing. Um, we were. We were like snorkeling, and we were on this island. They're like, "Oh, there's there's snakes over there." Like you can go there, but people saw snakes yesterday. Isn't that like one of your fears? Yeah, snakes and water. It's, to- it's horrible. Is that because Jordan Peterson talks about the like, the the theory of humans being against snakes? Yeah, like, probably. Of the no, I've just story? never liked snakes, but I think that's banded coral. Coral, coral not crowel. Oh, well, well, I can't that's see it. It's that, far away. That's that You're Lincoln. Seven, that's one that of these? Lincoln education. Yeah, I think it was something it looks, like this. It looks like that right there. Right here? Branded Malayan coral snake right there. Yeah. Oh. Those like black. It's black and white, and they're striped. And they, <sighs> Hails, nah. They get, oh, I saw them. I would, I would absolutely freak I've if seen I saw one, one of those. I've seen one, the and thickness. And they'll come up and bite you? Yeah, they don't, I mean, they don't really mess with you. Most stuff doesn't mess with you. Triggerfish, I've been attacked by triggerfish. They're very territorial. It's trigger, but it's because so it looks like imagine a fish that looks like tomato. Do you? Oh, well, I'm now making another reference. Cars. Do you know the movie Cars? Pixar animation. Yeah, I Lightning saw that McQueen. One. So the tow truck that is. Is this a trigger fish? Uh, it's the yes. So the one right, the third one in, third one in, the Titan trigger fish. This thing they get really beefy. I've seen a, a big ones like the size of your torso, and. So what he does, if you look at it's hard to see, but he's got these like big Percy lips like uh, Kim Kardashian. And then you take Tom Mater from Cars the Movie, his yeah. teeth. Like, uh, yeah. who's the Toe, comedian? Tom Mater. What's his what's the comedian's name? Larry the Cable Guy. Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, Toe to Mater. Yeah, Toe Mater. He, those teeth are like, that's what, and so. And so will they bite you? So they have a nest and it looks like a cone. So, um. It's not just like, oh, this piece of coral, like an anemone or like with a clownfish. And so you swim into their nest and most people like their, your instant reaction is like, oh, I'll swim away. So I swim up and that doesn't do anything. And they'll keep attacking you because their, their nest is a cone. So you have to swim out of their nest. Like you can't swim up. So like normally I have like a tank banger, like to make noise underwater, like get someone's attention. Cause you can't, I can't be like, Hey. I heard, I heard when we were snorkeling in Belize this summer, I heard this. You can hear really loud underwater. So they were doing this when we were snorkeling. And that's if you have like – And I had sounds, a life jacket because I don't swim. Yeah, you well. can't swim. If – like you know how it, one of the easiest ways for me to like end your life? Like if I had to – I would just fill this fill this entire room with water and you'd be done. I would freak. What is it? So almost, tell me. I, I want to know. I drowned in Indonesia. I want to understand. Like four years, three years ago. Four years ago. Why are you afraid of the ocean? What is the. You, we don't know what's in there. It just. I don't. I'm in their domain. I don't know is anything it you, about it. I also don't know the. I don't understand the ocean. Like, I don't understand currents. I don't understand. Oh, that's crazy. They're like, oh, yeah, there's a current underwater. I'm like, what? Like wind? Yeah. I'm like, no, there's no wind underwater. I mean, t- I, that would be my no, equivalent. And so then when I was on that Indo- or that Philippines tour in Malapasqua, there was a super strong current. Like co- like right when you jump in, it would just start taking you, but you can swim out of it pretty easy. Oh, yeah. But I literally was like, ah, I just had to like and you can't just swim. swim super hard to get through it. And I was just like, what if I didn't make it? Like I would have to start way up where the boat was and then I was just like try to swim across as I'm getting shoved down and I'm like if I miss the boat there was one time where I just grabbed the back end of it I was like I don't know what would have happened you go to Australia well I'd be dead never, I just drown and never find your body I don't I just I don't understand I'm not well versed in ocean and currents and the ocean can be scary like man. surfing I'm like I literally just went I'm like the guy who just 
okay, I know how to snowboard. I know how to skateboard. I know how to wake skate. I know how to wakeboard. Like, I know how to do all that stuff. So I'm like, eh, surfing. Same thing. Not like, I get it. I literally catch, I caught my first wave I ever tried. I'm like, oh, it's easy. And then you fall. And then you get destroyed by these waves. And I'm like, what the, I don't know what's going on. Don't know which way is up. Like, when they say you don't know which way is up, I'm like, oh, it's got to be easy. I'm like, nope. It's weird. When you're just spinning, I'm like, yeah. That's why I almost drowned in Indonesia, and I have not surfed since. I would, I would surf, I just haven't. Which, uh, I just need to learn more about it. So I should probably like get a dive, do a dive class or something. It's two. Like, it's like the airplane thing. Like I'm scared to fly, so I want to learn. I want to get my pilot's license. I mean, you, I'm definitely a face your fears guy. Like, yeah, you got it. I'll do just it. like, I'll just do it a lot. Which is why yeah. I'm not against doing it. I just, I haven't been in a situation. So two, two things about swimming. One. I recently swam a mile. I didn't realize how far a mile was swimming, but it took me an hour. But then, um, cause I'm like secretly, if I were to not be traveling again, then I was secretly training for a triathlon. Well, also what I like to call hashtag zombie preparation. Why would you train? Why? But that's no, it's, I mean, cause I'm as, I don't want to get eaten. Hey, you know what we need to zombies. do is we need to plan something like extreme. Some like, we're going to bike across Australia or something like motor like bicycle yeah I think people have done that well I know but like that would be more interesting the, and the, vlog Joe Rogan, the whole journey Joe, yeah Joe Rogan just had a guy on who walked the Yangtze River the entire thing first person to ever do it it's the biggest What's it's the, who's the guy? biggest river in the world and it's in China and it starts in well it starts in Tibet like the source of it starts in Tibet who is the guy what was his name um, I'll have to look it up but because um, the last one, uh, he had him on again. Remember the guy who walked? He was the first man to walk across Antarctica with no replenishments. Yep, yeah, yeah, that guy's cool. Oh, uh, his name is Ash Dykes. Here, Ash, Ash Dykes. Dykes, fourteen podcast fourteen ten. It's really good because he also did a he carried so like he does all these extreme. Mm. He's from Wales. He does all these extreme like travel things. He's like he used to just. I mean, he's our, he might be a little younger than us. Maybe he's your age. But uh, he used to just, like, was backpacking Asia. Just, like, literally doing the same stuff. Just backpacking, hanging out. And then he's like, eh, let's do something, like, kind of crazy. And so then he went to Mongolia and walked across Mongolia with, like, uh, he carried, like, a, I don't know, like a rickshaw all the way across all the way across Mongolia, and he just slept out in the desert. What? And there was, like, wolves and stuff. Like, he has, like, some crazy stories. He's like, he yeah, has, I just thought I'd do it. You know what I haven't listened to in and forever? And now he does it. Is uh, that podcast we got that recommendation for, uh, Tales of the Wild Ones. Yeah. Like, that dude, I bet this Did you listen Ashtags. to the, for, the India one? Oh, yeah. Oh. If you guys want oh. to, well, I actually don't even know if I'd recommend it. If you have somewhat traveled you should listen to this podcast yeah. if you have not traveled i would say if you're not traveled outside the u.s i and would say afraid. do not listen don't to listen it. to yeah. this don't listen this to this is one. this podcast this one's terrifying it's like the base the basis of the podcast is it's like people who travel a bunch and their wildest stories which actually i yeah. was going to get into to ask you um but uh regarding like because uh someone asked me the other day they said like did you like because people always ask like are you afraid like do yeah. you like, did someone, like, do people rob you? Like, that? and I'm like, no. Like, I, now, and. Like, I've gotten like, pickpocketed, but nothing, like, nothing violent. Yeah, it's never been, like, where I felt super uncomfortable. I did Remember? in in Brazil. but I think Brazil, I think South America, that's why I want to go to South America. But also, it was my first time to Brazil. I bet if I went back, and it was during the World Cup, so. It'd be, it's just, I think it's di it's different for everyone. Like there are people that say this is bad or that is bad, and like, but then there are people that go and don't don't say anything. You know, like yeah, because like, a lot of like a, f like f people I meet that travel that are girls, they're always like, I don't want to go to India or like I don't want to go to like the Middle East, like places where they're more violent yeah. towards women. And it's like, I mean, I get that. Like, I, I get like you do need to be more careful. I would say you can't go off the beaten path too much. Probably, I mean, I, I don't know. My recommendation would be don't go off the beaten path too much in India if you're a girl and you're blonde. Yeah. Especially after listening to that podcast. Yeah, yeah. especially after listening to that podcast. Don't Diaries, listen to the podcast. I'll, I'll link that 
I'll link it below in the YouTube. And I, I'll just link it below. Because that to is something. A, it's a that's a brutal. awesome story, but it's scary. I was like, I I my I was getting was goosebumps. Pumping. Yeah, yeah. I don't, and I don't get I don't get nervous a lot. It was really cool. So I was all about like, but that's such a cool story to tell. Like, if you can survive something like that, it's just such a one. It's a great. Ex- well, it's life. It's a lot of life experience, but then it's you also have like an insane story. Like I wish I had more crazy stories to tell. I guess. Well, and that's what like I just feel like, and maybe it's just my n- naivety, na- naivety, naiveness. Yeah. That like people are like, oh, that's so crazy. Like what happened? And I'm like, I just went out in Vietnam and like yeah. had drinks at a bar. Like whoa! Like and I'm like what? Like but it's all relative, right? Like, yeah. Like someone's perception, I don't know. Just to me, they're like, I could never do what you do. I'm like, well, what what, what is it that I do that's crazy? They're like, well, you're traveling. I'm like, yeah, but I'm staying in like hostels. I think everyone with- just can't get past the uh, language barrier, and I'm like, it's really not that hard. You like you you figure it out. It's one of those you don't know how easy it is till you're in the situation, and then you're just like, like they know what everyone knows what a, a bus is yeah. or a train or food. It's not like and, or if you, play you need charades. water, they're gonna have no idea what you mean when yeah. you're, pre- you do like the I drinking will, motion. I will say this: so I speak conversational Indonesian now. I would say, like, uh, to the point where I can, like, be on like, hello, how much? Give me a little something. Say like, where are the ladies at tonight? Uh de mana, cewek di sini. Saya tidak lihat. Chewet Ada Which means like I don't see any girls Like Ada means like There is So like Are there Like Where is Okay now say Where is the nearest Gay club <laughs> I'm sure I you didn't use that one A few times I didn't I didn't learn Gay club In no? Indonesian Cause I'm not Drew I don't just go to Gay clubs Gay clubs Sometimes I get it. You're gay for pay. It's cool. G for P. Um, but uh, but I will say that learning Indonesian and even Vietnamese, like I learned a few phrases here and there that as I was like going around, like I could read and a little bit and yeah. like understand. It same. goes so far. Oh like, yeah. If you just say a little bit, they'll love so it. So f- and they love it and they laugh like they laugh and like in my head I'm like you're making fun of me because I speak terrible. Your well, language, they're f- yeah, they're not. They're just they're but excited. It's just, they that think it's trying. like funny or cute, but it's so much more like, like when I'm in Indonesia, I can like start talking to a guy and like quickly be like, "Hey, I get seasick. Like, uh, can I sit up with the captain?" Yeah, and they're like, "Yeah," and it, where everyone else sits, in... I say it in Indonesian. Yeah, where the difference, like someone could be like, "I get sick," and they'll be like sit in the back. I'm yeah. like, "I get sick," like. Yeah. Like, can I sit with you guys? And they're like, oh. And it just, the same thing, like, how much when I pay, like, for now it's not a ton of difference. And when you're in Indonesia, it's cheap anyways. But I pay, like, what, more so, like, local prices because yeah. I have friends that live on the island I lived on as well as, like, me how being able to speak. How big is Nusa Panita? It's actually the biggest, like, one of the biggest compared to, like, there's two other islands that people normally go to. There's uh, Lombok. Chimbongan. Uh, Chimbogan. Yeah. Limbogan. Uh, Limbogan and Shenigan. And they're way smaller than Panita. Panita has a lot of... It actually just got named number one tourist back backpacker spots for 2020. Which uh, is a... Lusa Panita? Yeah. It's a good It's a good thing and a I bad thing. I know it's thing. close. I mean, I, I remember how close it was. Like, it's a it's a bad... Th- it's a good thing in that it's promoting Indonesia and it's promoting tourism. But it's a bad thing it's because gonna turn now... Into, I mean, you just don't want it to turn yeah. into PP... And or, now it's going to be PP in Bali. Like, that's what's going to happen. And that's what sucks about, like, I mean, it's at great. least in Bali, it's so big that you can get out. I mean, like, you can still find like some. digital nomad heaven. Yeah. Which, I mean, for a reason. It's gorgeous and it's cheap. But, so, Good oh, Wi-Fi. Panita. Is it Panita? Nusa, Nusa Panita. I know Nusa Panita, but is it Panita Island right yeah, here? Yeah, Panita Island. So, okay. Lembogan, Chanigan are the Lem- two smaller ones. Panita. And then this is Lembok. Yep. And then, um, there where's the... Komodo. Uh, you gotta f- keep going. I think it's going? farther. Yeah. 
It's one of these. Yeah, it's somewhere over there. But Panita, uh, for an island, it's bi- I mean, it's bigger than all the Gillies. So I've been it's to, bigger than. Well, actually, I was never in Lombok because I went to. Did you go to. Oh, you were in Gilly T, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I shot a. That's what you did. Shot that. So Noosa party Lembongan. There. Lembogan. And, and that's. You were staying on Panita Island, though. Yep. Where yep. were you staying? So I lived, if you look at. See where that little inlet Here? at the top left corner? Keep going, keep Here? going. Right there. I lived right there. There's a village called Toyapaka. It's a Muslim village. So they have the call to prayer five times a day? Yep, at 5 a.m. That's it, it's kind of cool. I've been to, I've actually I been like to, it. dude, I've been to three mosque ceremonies now because, like, my local friends, like, yeah, they invite us, and it's awesome. I like, think it sounds so cool. Now, maybe not at 5 a.m. every day because I remember Well, and you, you sleep through it. You sleep through it. it. Like, it's 5, 9, 12, 3, and 7. I just remember uh, being in Turkey, first country outside the U.S., and... Uh, we woke up to that, and I was just like, this is, I mean, that was a bit of a culture shock. Yeah, and it's, well, and that's. That's the first place I've been is Turkey. And, I mean, Turkey's not that, not anything crazy, I don't think. It's but. it's cool just from the standpoint of, like. It sets the they, scene. The people want to, like, want you to, especially once you become, like, part of the community. Like, yeah. people want you to be at stuff. Like, my nickname was Homeless Guy, uh, well, which. That has not changed. In Indonesian, it's a guy's name, but they say Kakupet. Is his name? Kakupe. And so, uh, they I like walk down like uh, on the streets of Panita, and I just hear Kakupe. So where was and, your hut? Uh, so if you scroll out, scroll out. Did you go to that uh, Miami Beach Club? What's it called? Punching um, Mar- Martui Beach Club. It is. Did you go hit this place up? <laughs> There's no Maruti Beach Club. I don't think there's a Maruti. It might be that be, might be Nusa Panita Beach Club. But I live. It says Marudi, it's, bro. I don't know if you can see Punchin. You want to see Punchin Nusa Janung on Google? I, I, I don't know how to say Panita. That. Nusa uh, Janung, I think, is J I N U N G. There. That? Yep. Bungalow? Yep, that's me. Toyopaka. Right there. That's where I lived. So see those two nice, the really nice bungalows in the picture? Yeah. I was in neither of those. I was in the. <laughs> I was in okay, the, so you see the really, the really nice, nice. Yeah, like not it's got that. The I was in the thing. shed in the yeah, back. Yeah. Okay. So right behind that, yeah, there's, there's a, a sh- mat there's literally on the a floor. shed. If you go behind the shed, that's where I lived. And they okay. So did you walk by this every day? Yeah, yeah. Like my so I, there's a fridge right under this bungalow, and that's where I kept I made overnight oats. You kept all your oats. Oh, did you did you actually say oats? Yeah, I yeah, mean, I was making fun of you. Yeah, no, I kept yeah. oats because I made Lena overnight eats oats only every grass, day. no oats and uh, like protein bars, and spends like twelve dollars on protein bars. Uh, Three dollars. I don't have enough you money. Paid nine to get do- a- you paid nine dollars. You paid nine dollars for a a literally Daily what is burrito. what is With going to cream. give you cancer? Well, that's you're why going I don't work to out. die from. That's colon cancer. That's why I don't work out. Well, that anymore. working out would be <laughs> no. That would be productive in your life. What was it? I I was just listening to a Joe Rogan podcast or some podcast. So is this little area? Uh, keep going. Here. Keep going. Yeah. That way. Let's see here. Oh, stop. Turn left. Turn left. Oh, go left there. All right, right I, down that road. Right down there. Yep. You gotta keep. It's like I don't know if you can go in there, but I, I don't think I can. Oh, no, I can't. No. Yeah, it's like so. This is a there's a. Do you know any of these people on the street? Who's that? Who's that kid? I don't. This was probably taken in like. This is way this outdated. Guy? This is way outdated. Who's this guy? All right, never mind. I'm not gonna respond to that. Okay. Well. All right. Um. What so, were we talking about before that? Uh, the different. And islands. so you were there like, for how long? Four and a half months. And, and it was. Did you stay in that bungalow for four and a half months? Yeah. Yeah. Shed. You call it a shed. A shed. It was a glorified shed, which and I'm okay with. Like I lived. I like that. I I didn't have AC. No. How did you survive? I had a fan. Because you cannot do yeah, anything not, without AC. Well, so the nice thing is that at night, Panita actually, and because I've like I've been living in Asia at this point for over a year, that I'm pretty. I was pretty well acclimatized to. I mean, we were warm like weather. six months in, and you were not very acclimatized. Yeah, I know, but I did another six months. I know, but I guess it just takes maybe some people longer. And I was, well, and now I can't handle, like, this cold in the breath. I can't handle yeah, it at all. Yeah, this is terrible. I'm, like, I'm. It's horrible. And I go, so I, like, I'm pretty much always wearing, like, multiple layers. Like, I can't handle here? it. Here? Here. Yeah. Whereas there, I'm just, I don't, 
wear a shirt and then at night i wear like a like a long sleeve just because i get cold on my motorbike but i was yeah. at the point where at night i would get cold so i would have a fan and then i had to turn the fan off or like i would Did face it, get it chilly there at night chilly i mean like 37 degrees like it's not hmm. like enough that it's um like the fan i was fine with and i just had like a sheet that i slept on of course you did. Like it didn't. Uh, it was so very basic. Were there other people staying there with you? No. There's just no. Me. I mean, like, were there other like people doing their dive masters for? Four oh, and a half uh, months? yeah. There was uh, two DMs that came through, and then actually a good friend of mine now. Um, her name is Marion. She's from France. Oh, nice. Uh, but her dad lived in Portland, or fr- was from Portland, or something like that. So she's like. She's not like the typical French like accent like like she was pretty standard like you, if she just talked to you you would maybe guess that there's an accent but like yeah um, but she speaks fluent French and like um, but her and I did the same amount of time to do our dive master and then there was a couple other dive masters that came through that did it in like a month which is like super super fast like you just it's how hard many to, dives a day is a month uh sixty maybe no, if you how do- many dives a day is this do you do oh 60 a month so you do two a day yeah two a day basically for 30 days for 30 days and then some days off some days on it just depends but um but yeah and uh so then uh her boyfriend was actually one of the instructors at the shop too so um, oh cool so it was good like were, and were i like i really indonesian or were they no all western? all western and then one we had one dive master that was a uh, indonesian how long he was like a freelancer um, his boyfriend were, or her boyfriend was like a year and a half. He lived there, hmm. but you get, and you get like, uh, so once you're a dive master, can you then train people? So I can't do, I, I can't train, but I can, uh, I can do what's called a scuba refresh. So like if you were certified and you haven't dove in six months and you needed to come through and like you wanted to do a scuba refresh like you yeah. forgot like like if me and you were to wrestle and I would just mm, no nope. well, that wouldn't happen sh- it wouldn't happen destroy you also wouldn't I would happen. I would pick I mean if I had maybe if I was, had no arms you might have a chance but so the basis of like how of how well ride, bro. how well you've how much you've forgotten in wrestling Dude, imagine, you've imagine that. I've gotten back into it a little imagine bit. Imagine that same concept, but with diving. So people dive like once a year, and so they want to do a scuba refresh. Like, hey, make sure I'm not going to die. How much does a scuba refresh cost? Uh, like, you get two dives with it, but probably be like hundred bucks. No, and then that lets no, you like dive 80 bucks. for longer. Uh, no, it just means like it's like brushing up on your certification, like. Like you need to like like when I have to show you how to do like stance and like what a what a okay. step in single is and yeah just like all the basics like hand fighting that that so I then don't need. so so then you can kind of understand like okay here's how I set up my tank here's how I yeah. ensure like my equipment works so you don't get underwater and then you're like this I ask you how much air you have and you like look at me like I'm a crazy person and then I have to grab that your would gauge. Be scary. Or, I'd be like yo I'll scuba dive but I'm gonna be like with like ten feet down the whole time. Just chilling so they can, like, just come back up. I've gone to 40 meters. That's so – does that hurt your ears, like, really bad? No, you equalize. Like, you're just, like – You just – It's like, oh, my ears hurt. Yeah, but when I go, like, 12 feet down in the pool, my ears hurt. Yeah, you have to equalize. Yeah, but that kind of hurts when I equalize. Yeah, well, that means you went down too fast. That's what she said. <laughs> Arf. Arf. All right. Any office, like All who, right. who can't, who cannot? I don't have the the ability or the wherewithal to not hear something like that and instantly think Michael Scott and then go, "That's what she said." Well, hey, I know I'm not mature. That happens. I'm 28 years old and I'm not mature. Ugh, you don't have to be. That's hey, point. I want to, I want to ask you something. Okay. I want to, I want to understand. I'm nervous. Why do you have a bald spot on your face? Oh, yeah, we talked about me, this like yeah. a few podcasts What ago. is this? I don't know. So we looked it up, and it's like, uh, I don't know. It just, I don't know what it is. They say that it happens. They don't know why it happens, but then it can just be there. It's called alopecia or Would you ever terra or something. And then it's like, it, it appears over two days from nothing to then just this. And then 
Uh, and then they're like, yeah, it could just go away or it could be there forever or it could literally, they're just like, yeah. Would like, you ever, really would you ever. So I got this stuff. I started putting like minoxidil on it. Would you ever it's just shave healthy. everything? Like. Go big, like. No, no. Everything. No. Um, Eyebrows. I have a movie quote from that. But the, uh, the other guys, have you seen that? With Will Ferrell? Yeah, it just went on Netflix again, which what, I'm yeah, really when, uh, excited about. When the guy's sitting there, it's uh, Christina yeah. is trying to get back with Will I Ferrell, and guy. he's, sit, he's, he's sitting like, there. You yeah. think <laughs> because. But actually. Shaved, shaved. Like, no, I'm saying you bick your head, but then also bick your beard. So, like, you're just straight. I mean, you're, aerodyn- you're aerodynamic. Have you gone? Have you thought? That I have around? not not had a beard since two thousand since the World Cup in twenty fourteen. That's what I'm saying. I don't remember the last time. I, I don't remember the last time I used a razor. Yeah, well, I I used to use the razor here, and then I get pizza neck, looking like doing my best Jeffrey Epstein, into impression. I don't know if you can. Can we say that? Is we can that say too? That. We can say that. Yeah, yeah we don't know if I mean, himself. Yeah, sure. And well, we I mean, it's been a month or so, but you can't make it. Well. Don't make a Kobe joke. I said that to, to Rutledge, and it got a few laughs. It got a few, okay, it got a few laughs at a wrestling tournament from some of the coaches that were that overheard it. It's good. It's and good. So, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're so past I get that, that pizza neck, and I didn't like that, and so I just I just do the uh, trim. Also, I don't have time, and I don't. I just don't care that. I much. don't think. I don't think. I think the rule is if it's on a Netflix special or somewhere it pops up on YouTube, then it's okay to make. Fun yeah, of it's okay to make fun of it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Not much of a looker in the first place. So like going from like a Lincoln, like three point seven to like a Lincoln three point four. Eh, that's why it doesn't change. That's why much. you gotta up. You gotta up your fashion game, bro. Look at me. Look at me. Look at this. You see this? You. This is called style. I'm not. I'm no. not saying that I'm the Did alpha. You another stupid tattoo I'm not, somewhere. I'm not saying that I'm an alpha, but. I'm an alpha in hey, this who situation. Has more, who, who has, has more? more? This is how we you know. Do. This is how you know someone's traveled. I just lost one at practice the other day. This is how you know someone That's travels good. if you wear bracelets. Or, or someone just, or they just buy bracelets. Or they just buy. It could be. I don't know. I bought one in Belize and it lasted for three days. That's what she said. Do <laughs> wait. What? That one doesn't even make sense. Hey, all right. You want to talk? Let's talk wrestling. Let's talk a little wrestling. I like I like how you like segmented. What? Like what are we you lost one at wrestling. wrestling. Here's what do you talk about in wrestling. Here's where here's where I'm at. Burroughs isn't making the 2020 team. Oh jeez. This is not going to be a very popular opinion. I'm just saying. I think not. anybody who's listened to this podcast up to this point doesn't care <laughs> yeah, at all about wrestling. I know that's true. That's true. But he's not. I just want everyone to know because I know a lot of wrestlers know myself I'm go, and I'm Drew. Gonna go, I'm going to say he does, but. I don't we'll think you will. I think Dake's on another level, but that's for a different podcast. We'll talk about wrestling one day. I just want to, we could cover all aspects yeah. of wrestling. We'll bring Keenan in or Jeff. We'll just do it on the Rift Through Wrestling Dad podcast, which you should check out, which oh, we true. haven't done one forever. So, and, because of wrestling season, and, which is all over in two weeks. And then I'm done. Where are you going? Where are you going again? Tell me where you're going. So, I know, but they don't know. Flying to Wales in, or go, flying to London. The trash. then going to ass. Wales. Going to Wales. What? Yeah, you call to have your knickers. Okay, that is. Do, do you have trousers? Okay, what accent S- are you trying to? Pang scran. Is that you? Oh, is this that J- this is that Jake? this is real pang scran. I pang scran, mate. I'm gonna that's need like, you. That's like n- neither one of those. Though. I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need you to stop talking like that because what the impersonation that I just did. Sounds exactly like what you're the way you're talking. No, hey, you keep talking to me like that. You keep saying what you, you say. Ca- yeah, I'm not for manners. You'll see you, what happens. You keep chomping them clam bits. You see what happens, yeah. See, uh, you sound more of like a transporter. Is it more like no? Because then I go Australian. He seems like a lot here. I can say Wallaby, <laughs> and then it's like you know two. Did you go to Australia at all? No. no. A lot. I think I'd like maybe to go to Australia. Like I don't. Australia, maybe not right now. Yeah, it's just well, not I as mean, picturesque as it could be. I mean, yeah, it's a, you can't no, you can't make jokes about the fires. It's still happening, but um, I'd like to. Like, I think I think I'd enjoy me and the, uh, you know, the good old mates, the the good old peeps. But uh, isn't Jake there? Jake's there right yeah, now. Yeah, but no, he's in he's in Bali. 
He's now in, he's in Bali? Yeah, he's in Bali. He's meeting up with his future ex-wife, Emily. Oh, nice. But, uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny story that we can't tell. Yeah, we're not but, gonna uh... Tell, we're not gonna tell those stories. But, <laughs> um... The... The problem I have... Here's the first thing that pops into my head when I think English accent. I think two things. I think Chris D'Elia making fun of the English guy stand-up. And then I think Russell Brand... Uh, get him to the Greek. Yeah, when he's talking, he's I was like, that the other day. He's like, "Hey, mum, like, tea, tea and crumpets, mum, mum, mum." I like that, his accent the most. Out of Ru- all I know he's accents. got a very, it's very. It's a nice whereas English it just accent. sometimes though, like I don't care what you say, it's not the Queen's English. Like whatever you're saying, English people out there, change it because it's not. Mm, change it. It's not real. I haven't heard accent since too long. It's been. It'll be. Yeah, how long have you been in the States? What's it like? Like eight months. What does it feel so like? So long. Is it weird? Like, because to me, I'm still kind of like weird. It is weird. weird. Well, I it's notice. weird that I'm here, and then, like, the weirdest thing is being like, oh, one year ago, you were, this is what you were doing. I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, my gosh, that was a year ago? Uh, and so awesome. Are you, like, I don't, this is the, this is, I'm still this way. I mean, I've only been home for almost two months now, um, but I go to places and I do things and I, I'm very aware of how things are different than they were in Asia. Like I'm still like a waiter will come up and I go in my head. I've gone. I just mentally counted. That's the first time this person's come to the table and then they leave and then they come back and I go second, third, fourth. Why? Why do you do that? Because I'm like in Asia, they they don't really like unless you're at a Western restaurant, but like let's say you go to a warung, which is like Indonesian for restaurant, but yeah, you're you're sitting there and it's like a local warung, like, and you order your food, they bring you the food, and then you don't hear from them until you're done. Yeah, like until well, you until, until you well no, or... but until you leave, like, yeah. like whereas in America or like the Western world, it's like this: How's your food tasting? Like, here's yeah. your food. How's everything going? Can I refill that water for you? Like, yeah, I hate that. Like, can and then you, as you like soon it as everyone dislike done, it, I dislike it. I because I've become, to me, I've become accustomed to the, the slower pace. Like, yeah. Like when she the other day, I caught up with Pinky. Uh, oh, Pink. Yeah, good old Pink. He's engaged now. Do you I know, know that? I saw that. Yeah, I mean his fiance, real nice gal. And, um, so we're sitting there, and like I told him, I go, that lady's been here like four times. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, the lady has come back to refill our waters like four times. Hmm. And he's like, why are you counting that? I'm like, dude, it's just, they don't do that. That's kind of a weird thing to count, though. And the same thing she brought, is literally, I, f- I was not even, I had three bites left of my salad because I'm healthy, unlike you. And I f- almost eat my third bite. Of, I've, I'm halfway through the three bites that I have left. And she is like, here's the check, no rush, though. And in Indonesia, it's like, you, I've, I don't know if I've ever heard well, the word. You have to like get them to like. Yeah, you have to be like, hey. Hey, I want to leave. I want now. to leave take my take my money what do you miss the most from asia the warm <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah uh no i would say the the most the thing i like the most what was your favorite is, thing besides diving in, okay into the first one and then in traveling or in like because here's here's what i loved about of especially in asia there's just a lot less I don't like the word drama, but but like there's a lot less people just care about a lot less. Like it's a lot more like free. Like yeah. you're just like you're just kind of like, hey man, if you're like if you're cool, like awesome, like we can hang out and like do stuff. But if then if you're not cool, then like either you be become cool to hang out with or like a nice guy or girl or whatever you identify as, and then. That's a controversial topic. We can nice that's... hear her Z's in. <laughs> but then like the like people just are more like, yo, I'm doing this thing. Like you can come if you want. If not, that's cool too. Like like it's just more like people are just more a uh, on their own like terms and like I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I like how I think I like how time stands still when you're traveling almost. Not it just everything goes so slower where you're like like I've been home for as long as I was gone and that I feel like I was gone for 2 years. Yeah. In the time that 
Do, but see, do you like feel the eight months that I've been home and the eight months that I was gone? It was like, oh, being gone, I feel like I did way. I mean, I just. But it do takes you, so much longer because I'm like, oh, I have so many memories. Where here, it's like there will be like three days in a row, or there'll be like two days in a row where I don't have human contact with anyone. And because I just sit down here and I just edit videos or something, and I'm like, or in the only you know contact I do have at times is just at wrestling practice. Do you feel like this? This was something that my brother told me. Um, I feel like I'm very in my own world. Like where I'm at is where I'm at. Like right now, I'm doing this podcast. Like yeah, here. And, like, I'm in Nebraska. Like, I'm doing Nebraska things. Like, I'm not really thinking about, yeah. like, I'm kind of in my own world. And so, because I, when I came back, one of the first things I asked them was, because I think perspective's cool. It's like, so, to me, like, I was gone 15 months. To me, it did not feel like, I was like, oh, I, was, I don't know. I've been gone for a while, I guess. Like, it's not like, like, I was gone for over a year. Yeah. But to them, like, to my family, my brother was like, yeah, dude, like, I literally haven't seen you in 15 months. And to me, I'm just like, oh, like I didn't even realize, like you don't even realize. Yeah. Like it, even though it's a, like it's a long time, it doesn't feel like a long time. Like, no, well, yeah. And especially, oh, I, I totally agree with that. But it, to me, it feels like it's been forever since I was gone. Yeah. But then when you're gone, it doesn't feel like you're gone for very long. But then that f very long is like 10 months. Like it's, but then I think looking back at it, I'm just like, geez, that was like a year ago. Like oftentimes I'll look at back something a year ago and I'm like, oh, I feel like that was yesterday. But when I look back at traveling, I'm like, I'm like, I remember doing that. I'm like, that was actually a year ago. Like that seems like three years ago because V like if I see something like right now, we had just been, where were we at? We were probably in, we were in Sri Lanka a year ago right now i think and and it just seemed like if i see that i'm like dang that feels like three years ago because after that we went to vietnam and then we and then we went to the philippines and then you know we like did we did all these other things and it was just like oh that that seemed like it took forever i guess i don't know and it, i just you just time here, flies here i was gonna say here's here's also what i think and i don't know if you agree with this in the u.s I, it's it hasn't hit me yet um i'm still kind of pretty unaware but days abroad don't really matter to me. Like whether it's like Tuesday or yeah. Saturday, like I'm just like, oh, like every day is the same. Like I do the same yeah. things every yep. day, no matter what. And so to me, days, days, months, weeks don't really matter. I'm just like, oh, it's just another day. Like, and I'm doing what I normally yeah. do every day. Like, and maybe some things change, but like I get so caught up in like I'm doing whatever I'm doing or I'm planning what the next thing is that I don't think like, oh, like these days are this, like. Yeah, well, you're also like, and this is super cliche to say, but you're also just in the moment more in the sense of like, I'm not thinking, I just remember being like it being December and I just like, okay, I just got to make sure the only thing I got to remember is I got to file my taxes by April 15th. Mm -hmm. Like that was it or 13th or whatever it is. That's the only thing I have to think about. Whereas like here, I'm like, oh, well, I got a thing. When is that tomorrow? Okay. And then, then. Thursday I have this and Friday I have that and and it's more. Whereas there you're just like, uh, I you don't even know what day it is. You don't know it, the date. You don't a, know. Especially too, do you feel this way that like when you're traveling by yourself, like versus me and you, or like when I was traveling with Jake yeah. or like or Ethan or whoever, like it. Um, when it's just you, there's no like, oh, I need to catch up with like a lot of times back home. It's like I get home and people want to grab a beer, or they want to catch up, or they want to talk about whatever. Like yeah. Like they're like, oh, we need a plan, and I don't. I'm like, oh, well, they're it's Monday through Friday, like they're working their day jobs. Like, yeah. I, I get that, but then for me abroad, like if you're by yourself, like I, the only people I would hang out with, like when I was living in Indonesia, are people that lived in Indonesia. Like customers would come in while I'm doing my dive master. Like I, let's say I took them diving that day, and like my instructors in the back, like supervising, like. And we get done diving, like, they're here for two days. Yeah. And they're like, oh, let's go get a beer. Like, let's, and I'm like, yeah, maybe, probably not, though, because I'm not going to, like, I just. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that's probably just working in the, working in a tourist, in, in a tourist field because they're there to have fun. Yeah. And you're living there. Yeah. So you're like, well, I can't do that because then I would do that every day. And it's just, it's a, uh, it's a weird, like, so, like, you don't have, like, people obligations is what I would call it. Yeah. Like, your brother's 
kids, like your yeah. nie- your niece and nephew, are like, it's their birthday, you got to do this thing. Or like, they're in town, so I got to do this. It's yeah. like, I don't have any of that. And I mean, it's very, we've talked about this before, that I think especially what I'm doing now is very selfish. Like, like, like yeah. traveling halfway across the world is a, kind of a selfish thing. Like, inherently, like I'm missing time with my niece and nephew. I'm missing yeah. time with my family. And it's, but it's like, if if all you ever think is that way, like you'll never do it, you know? Like Yeah. And I, and I, yeah. And for, especially because someday you may eventually have family. It's like, well then you really can't do anything. Yeah. So I do think people need to be at times more selfish in some sense, like be, I don't know. I think, I don't know if that, I mean, that makes sense to me in my head, but it doesn't come out very well, but it's like, yeah, you should just do what makes you happy. And it's like, yeah. And that in some ways that affects other people, but like, you can't have your happiness depend upon, like you shouldn't have your happiness depend on somebody else's happiness. How do you, how do you define happiness? I just think, you know, like I'm significantly less happier being cold than when I'm warm. <laughs> like, well, no, just like, like if you're just, I, I had no, I had almost, and I don't, at least I don't remember having like, like being exhausted, like just being run down and just in a bad mood and all those things. That just didn't happen. It doesn't happen too often for me on the road. Like there's negative things that happen for sure. Like miss buses or you don't, whatever you lose something, something gets stolen. But I don't know. I just feel like people here, it's so easy to just go through a routine and not change anything and just keep, if you're like kind of unhappy, then, then just not realizing you're unhappy and just keep doing it. Cause you're like, Oh, well it's work and work isn't supposed to be good. You know, yeah. like you're tired. You write like, it, you write it's it's it off like to something. Work. Work. Yeah. You're just like, Oh, well it's easy to explain that. Oh, well of course I'm, I, I, mean, I don't like going to work. So Cause it's work, but it's like, yeah, cause it's work. And I'm like, well, you do that five days a week, most of your life. So maybe you should do, I mean, maybe that's something to look into. Like, I'm not saying quit your job, but like, Oh, I forget where I heard it. it was like, if you're miserable for, t- for two weeks straight, like you need to somehow change something. Like, I'm not saying quit your job. I'm not saying, but like start working towards fixing that situation, like temporary un comfortable being temporarily temporarily uncomfortable is going to come with at least anything that's worthwhile. But if you're like actually miserable and you hate what you're doing, like, I'm like, uh, I'm just going to like change. I just need to change. Do you think, do you think that people, it's more the overcoming of their fear? Like people are afraid to change. Is that what stops someone from doing something in life? Because I, I feel like this, that people say this a lot in the Western world. I wish I wish I could do X Y Z or, um, like, yeah, I really should do A B and C. Yeah, like, and then it just never happens. Like, what is it? Is it that that people are content enough? I think people are content enough with where they're at, and they're afraid of what could happen if they were to change something. Like, it's like messing with the homeostasis. I don't know. I guess I don't. I don't know if. I always people are like I'm people are scared to succeed and I'm like I don't know I guess I just can't relate to that feeling at all like being afraid of something you want to do but I I guess I just I'm finding out with especially coaching this wrestling season that I don't relate well to a lot like a lot of people I just can't relate to the a situation yeah I'm like because if I was in this situation I would I would do something totally different you're also not empathetic though. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm also neither very, am I. I'm also very unempathetic. So, nor am I. Wait, yeah, I'm unempathetic. Is that a thing? Is that a word? Wait, empathetic. non non empathetic. That's an oxymoron. I'm very im. I don't have empathy. We'll just stick yeah. with that. Which I don't have a lot of empathy. So it's like, I think I think in my head I've just eventually been like, okay, I just need to. Like do what I can, but like I just, I guess I always think people will help themselves, yeah. And that's not the case, and I realize that's not the case. But I have to like, I have a hard time trying to really help someone who's not helping themselves. 
get like get out of your own yeah. way to allow yourself to like Yeah, so where that's where when I see people who maybe aren't happy or they're one of these other there's something negative, I'm like I'm guessing I just automatically think they're probably doing everything they can to get out of the situation. Now, I know that's not the case, yeah. but I'm just like how I I can't get I mean, should I and maybe I'm wrong for this, but should I get really wrapped up in their issues? Maybe, maybe I should, but I don't. Like I'm like, "Oh, that's like I'll help you if you if you want help or if you want if you need some help and I'll help you no matter what." But if you're not helping yourself, yeah. If you're miserable and you're doing nothing about it, and you don't really almost seems to care to do anything about it. It's like, uh, well, and if you, if you com- my thing is complaining, like you can, you can tell me about it and what you're doing to get out of your situation. I'm like, Oh, I get it. Like I get it. Yeah. But it'd be like, like if I came back and I was like, Oh dude, I, I spent a thousand bucks on this camera gear and I can't afford it. Like, and then just be like, uh, like maybe money. I'll just grow. It's like, what? Like, get a job like if you you know what i mean like like don't complain about your situation don't act what makes me mad is if you complain about your situation you're not actively trying to do something like because like you said i don't have i just don't have empathy i'm not like if someone's like oh well you know like i'm back i'm working seven days a week i'm like well how'd you get in that situation like i mean i yeah like if or if you're unhappy with your job or your work it's like what are you doing to change it? It's the same thing when someone asks, like, how do how do I, like, oh, I wish I could travel. Like, oh, I, like, it just seems so cool that you're traveling. And I'm like, like well, how much, uh, yeah, my response to that is just, like, how, do you actually want to? Or are no. you just, kind of like, is that like a conversation filler? For, yeah. I think for a lot of people it is. It's, it's just, it's like part of that. And like I said, I notice it more in the Western world where it's just like, you have these, like, like conversation filling things, like, just like, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? And then like, oh, I wish I could do what you're doing. But here's what I've been doing this week. Like, yeah. okay. It's the same thing like when you get an automatic response, like waiter drops your food off and like, they're like, enjoy your food. And you go, you too. And you like laugh about yeah. it. Like, oh. it's like, you're just saying words. Whereas like me in a weird serial killer type way, I think about why did I just say that? Yeah. I uh, When I was at the World Cup in Brazil, uh, I met two older American guys. I think both had Brazilian wives and they were big soccer fans and they go to every, the one of them goes to every world cup. He's been every world cup since like 2002 and he was probably 40 at that time. And, uh, and I just remember we were having a conversation. It was after, uh, one of the games and we got, or it was after our last game, we got eliminated and he was, we were just talking and he's like, we were talking about, you know, Russia in 2018 about going to that world cup. And he's like, Oh, I'm going to go. He's like, man, he's like, I was like, yeah, I know. I got a lot of friends who say they want to go too. And he's like, yep. Yeah. I mean, he goes, everyone says they want to go. Yeah. He goes, and, and I, at first I tried to like, all right, hey, no, you really should really try to convince them. And he goes, and n- no one ever goes. He's yeah. like, they'll never, they'll never go. It's like almost no one will ever go. And he's like, I just stopped caring. I just go, well, I'll be there. I'll see you there. Yep. Let me know when your flight is booked. Because, here's, here's and the that's days. kind of his thing because it, it's just like everyone – if you say, would you like to go to the World Cup? Everyone's probably going to say yes. Yeah. Most people are going to be like, yeah. But it's like, I guess just some maybe make it more of a priority, which is fine, which if you don't want to, you know, I don't think it's a good thing or a bad thing either way. If you yeah. want to do it, then do it if you don't. But I just, that's where I'm just kind of like, I think I've stepped back in a sense of I deal with everything like that. I'm like, like oh, I could do that. I'm like, oh, cool. Well, I'll be there. If you want to come, this is where I'm going. Yep. My flight's yeah. this day. I get in that day. The event's this day. I'll see you there. Like, if you really want help, I'll help you find the cheapest flights if you're ready to book them or whatever that is. Yep. But it's like, eh, I'm not doing anything else. Like, you just, I think, ever, people just say it with empty words. And, and then that's fine. Like, I don't I don't think, it's not one of those things where I'm like, oh, you have to go. Yeah. And I'm going to, I want you to go so bad that I'm going to convince. It's like when you but, watch a funny movie and you're like, you have to watch it. I'm going to make you watch it. It's like, nah, I'm just going to. I'll recommend it. If you don't watch it, then you don't watch it. But I and, still enjoy it. And that's what, like, I think, too, like, if, it, like, I would say you've probably learned that from being abroad and having to do things by yourself. Like, meaning, like, what I'm trying to say is you're more comfortable. Like, um, like it, I think there are certain things that people wouldn't do 
if they had to do them by themselves. So like, like if there was a big group of people going to the World Cup, like, and you have like, it's kind of like your Belize party. Like, you yeah. had all these people that had already confirmed. Well, now it's like, oh, well, all these people are going. Like, oh, okay, I'll go. But if yeah. you're like, um, like the same thing in like a college party. You're like, yeah. are you going to Amy's? It's not a party. Yeah, it was like, well, no one's who's gonna, who's gonna, who's gonna go. It's like, yeah. well, no, I mean. I'll let you know. These people said they're going to go, but no one's there until someone's there. Yeah. So. And it's like, you're like, I know I'm going to be there. Yeah. Like, like I'm flying to Indonesia March 17th. I'm like, yeah. people are like, oh, I really want to go to Bali. I'm like, okay, well, I will be in Indonesia yeah. March 17th. So. Yep. Like. There's flights every day. Like, that type of thing is, it's like, if you want to do it or if you have something, like, if it's really something you want to do, I think we talked about it. It's like. You don't say, oh, I wish I do that. You say, okay, how do I do what you just did? Yeah. And and there's different ways to look. I mean, I do – I'm reckless the other way where I'm just like, I want to go to that. I'm going to buy a flight. And I'll figure out the money later. Yeah. Like, And, and I, it, it's always worked out, but it's – that's more of a priority, and that's also reckless. Like, I get why people do – you know, I just – I think I just take the blanket thought of they're going to do what makes them happy. Yeah. And that's not true. But I, I think that's the only way I can try to rationalize it in my head. Otherwise, I just get – when someone's – I don't know. If someone's not helping themselves, I have a very difficult time helping them. I'm like, ah, like everyone's got problems. Like, I, if you don't – if you don't actually want to do this, you don't have to say it. Like, Yeah. Like, I'm like, not going to – Like, Nick Ridgway told me – and this, I was like, I love this. He was just like – we we're talking about traveling. He's like, "Yeah, I just don't want to do it." I'm like, "That's awesome. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm glad." Like, everyone says the other way. Yeah. And like, and most of them, and not most, but some of them, a lot of them are maybe lying to themselves. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm just not that interested in it." And I'm like, "That's awesome. I'm glad." Like, he knows what he wants, and he's just like, "Yeah, that's something I don't care about." And, and being I'm like, "Cool. Like, you don't have to be like, I don't think it's necessarily like the, you know, the best thing for everybody. So if you don't like it, just don't. Yeah." No, I love and, that too. And being like, I think that comes across more. Well, I mean, he's one of our good friends, but yeah. like from the standpoint of being genuine in your words, like, like if you're, if you're the type of person that like has never like traveled and you're like, oh, I wish I could go there. And in my head, the first, my first response is no, you don't like, why are you saying that? And normally I'm just like this. Oh yeah. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't know. I think people are trying to, maybe it's like a. It, but it also just might be like, I know you like it, and yeah, you know, like, it would be kind of cool, but, and and maybe I like it. It's just, I'm like, you don't have to like it. It's it's fine. Like, I don't I don't think less or more of you if you, yeah. I've met a lot of crappy people traveling too. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I would never be friends with you. And then I have friends who have no interest in it, and I'm like, I love hanging out with them more than a lot of people on the road. Do you remember that guy? Who was that guy in, uh, it was in Europe, uh. The dude from Utah. Oh, yeah. You remember that guy? What was his dude. name? Um, oh, man. And he was just, like, really uh, really blunt. Like, yeah. And he, he would was, just say stuff, also and you'd be like. messing with people. But, yeah, that was just. He oh, was, I'm like, man, this is not. You're going to get I like, punched. I like watching this guy from afar. It's like, it's like when you have an American, especially, like, someone who's, like, a big Donald Trump supporter, and they go to, like, Europe, and they're, like, brash. I'm like, oh man, I want to just, I just want to watch you interact with people because this is, because there's, it's like outside of the U.S., uh, literally everyone hates Donald Trump, yeah, except for like certain countries, probably. But, oh my gosh! And so, like, he was kind of that way. He was like, just be, he was he was super ugly American, but it was funny. So I like, I forget the guy's name. I forget his name too. I just remember he's from Utah, but it's it's funny because like. That's what people, like, people have this preemptive, like, ideology about Americans because they've met, like, a bad American or, like... Some, and we have a lot of bad ones that they travel. go to Europe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially Europe. I don't so notice that much as Europe, in Asia. Yeah. Asia's not that well, bad. Well, most bad. people's first first thought is, well, like, what about that tour group you did in Thailand? Oh, yeah. I mean, not that they were, like, ugly Americans by any... But they were just... They maybe hadn't traveled that much, and they were yeah. in Thailand. So you'll see you'll see big tour groups, maybe. And now with social media and everything, it's I think there's obviously m- more interest in traveling outside of Europe, but... 
Europe's it, seen as the safest place. When it's, it's just different. Like they're, and this would be my big thing is like I'm a lot more tolerant of uncomfortability than they were. Like they, yeah. their their stomachs were getting like messed up from some of the Thai food, which amazing Thai food. Like yeah. I mean, I eat like basically street rats. Like so, what I was eating, I was like, this is incredible. But for them, they're just not used to it. Like, yeah. And whereas I would, to- I mean, I tolerate a lot. And I, I remember my first time being out of the country and I was the same way. Yeah. And so I think it's, it just takes time. It's like with anything, you know? And, and it's not even like, uh, I I mean, you don't necessarily need that again. It's like, yeah, you don't, people don't have to necessarily be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, I think that's something I value of trying to just be okay when things are going wrong. But I mean, not everyone has to have that skill or yeah. care about that skill. Like, I think it's a, it's like, it, it's a good thing, but there's a lot of good things that I don't do. Yeah. Like nutrition or working out. Like there will be people who like, I cannot, people would think the same way of like, I cannot believe someone would not, would eat that crap. Yeah. And I'm like, eh. So in that way, I'm like, uh, I'm in, I'm the same type of person in that realm i'm very just not interested just at this point just not interested in like watching what i eat necessarily until you know i just and i get why people would be really frustrated with that yeah like why can't you just be more like healthy or more this i'm like yeah you're probably i mean yeah it's just not interested and so i think that's the way it i see it i guess of people like ugly american travelers i'm like yeah some of them just don't that's not a priority of like traveling. Yeah. More, I guess. I don't know. But well, and two, it's like uh like certain places like in Indonesia, I can't I don't have access to the stuff I have in the US. Like like I the reason I lost so much weight was cuz I was eating rice for like 80% of my meals. Oh like, yeah, remember in Myanmar, the old plain rice with exactly. salt and pepper? <laughs> it's just plain white rice, 30 cents. I got you, two of them, 60 cent meals. And you do like you do what you have to do. Like, yeah. But it's like I'm saving money and like yeah, if it comes at the sacrifice of me losing weight, like well, okay. Or the sacrifice of eating plain rice for for every Yeah, meal. like you do but I also I view food similarly to you in that it's like a it's a means to an end. Like I enjoy eating healthy food and I do stuff, but I'm like I need to eat to stay alive. But I'm going to try and put as good of like food in me as I can because I know it helps me mentally and like physically but then the weird thing I like like when I cook for myself I'm not a big like I don't do a lot of fancy stuff but I appreciate like I have friends that are really big into cooking and making fancy stuff and I'm like yeah. that's awesome I just eat, eat like it. yeah I'm like that's I'm I'm not gonna make it because I don't know what I'm doing but yeah like but I also I don't know I'm way more health conscious than you are like you yeah. eat SpaghettiOs with Cheetos and stuff so that's so good though <laughs> I'm all about like how cheap and how fast can it be made. Jake Taylor dot fit is hearing this right now and yeah. it's just losing. Jake Taylor dot fit. Losing his. What's the. It, we were going to do that. Jake Taylor dot par- bulge. What, that, I was going to say, what was the parody account? Jake Taylor like dot bulge. Rory Kramer started the uh, Matt Como's Arms account. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jake, Jake Taylor dot bulge. That would have yeah. been funny. I don't think people, people that travel with. That we haven't traveled together in a while, but if we were to travel together again, I think people's first person like impressions of us are like these guys are like weird. Like why why did he just want to create an Instagram account for my bulge? Like what? Like, well, it's you know, it was hanging out. It was hanging out. Hey, there you, quite I'm gonna a need bit. you. I'm gonna need you to keep that microphone. Yeah, no, my bad. My you bad. know, what? just make a fist. Just a fist away. Make a Thanks. fist and keep it. I've yeah. literally, I've been wanting to say that. Thanks, we've, Joe Rogan. We've been, I don't know how long we've been on this thing, but I'm in my head. I don't head, know how long we have either. I've, it's, it's probably a few hours. I've Coming been, on two, maybe three. I've been uh, wanting to, waiting for the situation where I could say that. And just now, now I feel like I'm accomplished. Now I'm, I've been in a podcast. And there you go. Now I understand it. But yeah, no, I'm just going to need you to make a, yep. just, just make it. a fist and keep it. See, I, I wonder how the whole traveling and doing podcasting. I think I'm going to turn this into a I don't. Ha- I don't need a guest. It's just me once a week. Like, what would you talk? Would you go like Chris D'Elia style on it? Like, uh, it would. Just, yeah, it would just be like whatever's whatever is going on. So I would do it. I would do it wherever. Yeah. And I would probably just talk about like 
what I'm doing yeah. or what has happened. Because that's what I like, would like to have a guest, which is people don't want to be on podcasts. Yeah, and that's I. My problem is this: like me talking to myself for a while, like it's gonna, like I think it's gonna be. It's like the first time you go vlogging, like the first time you hold a camera up. It'd be weird. It's really weird, but then like eventually you get used to it, and that's it's hard. I feel like what Chris D'Elia does, I think, is hard. Like I think podcasting by yourself. Yeah, it's you, it's more fun with someone else. Yeah, but well, and because you can, I also just like doing it. It's I don't know, it's fun. And a lot of people don't. They won't have the the capacity or the will to want to talk for like three hours yeah like i'm like or they haven't thought when i see there's a podcast that's like on joe rogan that's like four hours long i'm like oh it's probably really good yeah because if it wasn't good they wouldn't have gone four hours yeah so i get excited the longer the podcasts are it's always so weird how like i'll get the comments on these wrestling videos i'm making on my youtube channel linked below and selfish plug for at this follow, wrestling team follow the high tech hippie you can follow oh yeah i'll put all uh yeah we'll, we'll talk about it we'll talk about that at the end i'll be at the denver improv <laughs> don't March go 14. to that show <laughs> we were watching Chris uh, highlights yeah. <laughs> we were watching some Chris D'Elia podcast highlights but like a podcast like that like okay i don't think i don't find Chris D'Elia's stand up nearly as good as him just riffing with his friends yeah i think him just riffing off the top hanging out with like brian callen is so funny and then like his podcast or his stand-up i'm like eh, it's okay yeah. it's all right i don't think it's anything too special I, I think it's funny there's funny things in it but i'm like he's so much funnier just being him just talking and being himself well and him and brian callen i think arguably could have one of the funniest relationships in all oh of podcasts. it is it is and if you guys don't know you gotta type in just google Go- chris delia and brian callen and fighter and the kid podcast yeah it so, so it's so funny and they only i mean chris delia is just a guest on it when when they do it but it's it's really good so uh yeah that's that's but that's what i think podcast is cool is because you actually get as long as you can get people to be themselves, which I think Joe Rogan does really well, then it's... I think that's what... Uh, I'm going to ask you... i got to uh, use the ladies' room. but um, I'm going to riff. I'll talk about Yeah, something. I was going to say, talk about... I, I kind of want your take on where's this podcast going, what do you want to do with it, and what do you think makes a successful podcast? Okay. Like a Joe Rogan. Like I don't All right. You're going to have to just listen to this back to know what I say. But, uh, okay, where's this podcast going? Well, I have acquired... Uh, a I'm going traveling, like we kind of touched on a little bit, to Europe and North Africa in the end of next month. I'll be there until June, around that area. Don't have plans. So if you're in any of those areas and you're still listening to this podcast, hit me up. And we can uh, grab a nice craft brew. But uh, I I got a podcast equipment that I can take on the road with me. To where I can keep this thing going and I could probably do it a lot more because while wrestling these videos are taking forever but um so yeah and I'll probably just talk about like what's going on at that point I've had a lot of I got a lot of uh, uh unpopular opinions and that's gonna be a segment on the show called unpops and we just kind of talk about that and you know figure out figure out life together you know but just me talking to you. Or if you want to be a guest on the podcast, come on. I think everyone has something interesting to talk about. Everyone's interested in something. And uh, I would just want to I just talk to, them, talk to people about that. Talk to people about whatever's going on. You know, get politics right in the mix. Everyone loves that. Ooh, dicey. I'm gone for five minutes. You start talking about politics? Boom, politics. We're into it. I know who I'm voting for. And I am going to be voting for Cam Brady, Democratic nominee out of Cam, North Carolina. Cam Brady? Yep. Are you talking about, is this uh, what I think it is? I think, I think it is. Sir, right here. Cam sir Brady. have you had hey, five or six small, small batch, batch bourbons? bourbons? Right there. Cam Brady, 2020. Dude, I'm not going to lie. First, yeah. This is, a, this is a completely unrelated topic, like peeing. With overall, like overalls are not conducive yeah. for activities. Worst thing I took. So when we went to Asia, I brought <laughs> overalls as like a joke, and they were like really old and they're too small, and so like they kind of rode a little bit high up in your crotchal region, 
And so I had to always pick a side, and it was somewhat obvious, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. And well, I was like, and there there were these massive overalls, like, <laughs> and I just carried them for heavy eight months, too. heavy, heavy, just sitting in the bottom of my remember, bag. Remember, I think I wore them four times. <laughs> and one of them, six, didn't you have to wear? Months. Did you have to wear them? When, remember me, you, and Jake? Where were we flying when they tried to charge us for a checked bag? And, and we were we, flying in. Into or out of Myanmar, I don't and, remember. And we had to put on all our clothes and, like, carry them on because they were trying to charge us too much money. Like, it was, like, 100 oh, yeah. bucks for a bag. It was, it was me. I think it was Myanmar. I can't miss. Flying, flying back to Hanoi. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Like, dude, I just don't. I'm like, okay, if I wear them, I think here's what you should do. You should have a pound limit, a weight limit per pay, per ticket. You get a weight limit. Mm -hmm. And now I get the, like, you only get one bag, but like that bag's weight limit can be within whatever the thing is. So if you're a smaller person, if you can have more in your bag. Yeah. If you're a larger person, then maybe you have less because it's like, well, the plane can only have so much. It's like, yeah, I get it. You pay for the, you you get a certain amount of pounds to come on with. Because then it's like, okay, so we had to throw all of our clothes on and walk through Custom, or walked through the thing with them and then we put them in a bag and I'm just like this is so dumb it's like what and they made us do it and we were like holding up the line and we were in a rush and I'm like I was so pissed and some of the people like it's just like they can't break protocol they're like yeah. you're seeing I'm not throwing this away it's yeah. coming on the plane whether I'm wearing it or yeah. it's going under the plane like I'm like how does that not that ideology not sink in yeah. like I don't get that but I, like, you jam only it see, in our camera bags and you only see it in Asia like they don't do that in the US no not not really I haven't had it too many issues in the u.s but yeah. um so it was so cam brady cam brady <laughs> i just think man i used to be so into politics and i just i like listen to bill burr talk about it and he's just like dude it doesn't matter no it's like it doesn't matter people care too much yeah and then they get like like people will like in friendships and stuff over it. i'm like Really, over something like that, really probably is not going to ever affect you. No. And if it does, it's very minimal. Oh yeah, like your like, day to day life. The, the my main thing was like, oh, I just don't want Obama to get a second term because of Obamacare or whatever, because now I got to have insurance. I have to pay this money, and that was a. And then he wins, and I have to pay nine hundred dollars a year to not have insurance. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's unfortunate, but. Okay, now that's now I just have to do that. Like, yeah, that's just another thing. And I'm like, it's not doesn't affect me. I'm not I'm not less happy because of that. It's like, yeah, People, that's unfortunate, but I don't know. I just can't get like none of my happiness is tied to that. Yeah, and none of, none of who I am is tied to that. I just yeah. People who don't who just really don't care. I'm like, they seem like they're happier people than people who just really they don't care. play like the identity politics game or just they don't they just yeah they're just like eh, i don't really care or people who don't vote i'm like you're probably happier yeah i, don't I think vote. you should vote and i'm going to vote but i'm gonna vote for cam brady so i'm gonna waste time but i mean, I, I mean it's it, like I, I, I voted and i'm like i did but i you know, i think people should vote but it's like my vote's gonna mean nothing yeah so I don't know. I just how why people like let that stuff affect them. I can just see people like get just so heated about it. I'm like, well, and it's it's man. kind of the same thing. I don't know. Like when people take offense to so much stuff, especially like in the Western world, where it's like if you just cared less, yeah, you wouldn't have this problem. Like, like if some random person came up to me and said, I despise you as a human being which they do which we i mean it's very evident that i don't care for myself i mean other yeah. than this incredible outfit that i'm wearing but and i i just don't i don't know it's like i like okay sorry guy like you must be having a bad day yeah like i don't yep it's just why so many people have so much invested in caring what other people think like now, people that you care about, like if my brother said, "Like, dude, but yeah, why'd you get a Mike Tyson tattoo on your face?" Like, then I'm like, "I oh, actually man. thought for a second you got a Mike Tyson tattoo somewhere on your body." I did get a new tattoo. Yeah. I, have, I have ten. It's now. a turtle, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Where is it? That's right. Where is it? It's a turtle. Is it on your thigh? Donatello. I was like, 
Dude, I'm all about this barb loot. No, you're tattoo. not going to get. He has this idea. It's going to be so sweet. What is the tattoo? It's a therma, firma, what's it called? A what truffle ink? tree. No, the the ink type. Oh, ephemeral. Eph- ephemeral. So there's these tattoos. I want to know how developed. you found this. I uh, looked up removable tattoos. So ephemeral, yeah, ephemeral tattoos. Um, they're tattoos that like last. Uh, you can like take them away in like a few years or something like that. To the four people, to the four people that listen to this podcast, including because I'm going to use the same episode on the Matt Lena podcast. Please comment below and tell him get a tattoo. Or don't. But, like, I mean, hey, what if you don't want it after, like, six years? Then cover it Here's up. the thing is, is if I, if these ephemeral tattoos were around longer, I would have gotten tons of tattoos. And I'd be like, oh, maybe I want it. And I do think maybe there's an option to where if you don't want – if you do want it after, like, a certain amount of time, you just don't do anything and it will stay. But if you don't want it, you can, like, put the solution on it every day. And then if slowly you'll just, like – poop it out essentially <laughs> hey I i'm have, all about it i'm working on my sleeve on my arm i know but i'm what like if commit commit to getting a tattoo or don't that's what I'm, that's where i'm at i don't do this why stuff. though like certain things you can kind of be half in like knitting why can't you be half in on a tattoo or like uh what if it's like crock pot meals you to can me it's be all, what, if it, what if it was like with clothes do you think that's the same like nope you choose one shirt i'll choose one shirt and if you only get one shirt, and if you don't like it, well, tough. Yeah, Commit to it. That, it's the that, same thing. Sh- no, it's not. It's <laughs> the same thing. That's not – you can't – you can't – I want to make an analogy to another example that you've made, but it's not appropriate for this podcast. And I – it doesn't – the shirt, it doesn't work. That's not the same. A shirt cannot compare to something that you permanently place on your body. You don't permanently place a shirt on your body. Well, I, that's what I'm saying, but you, tattoos wouldn't have to be that way. If tattoos weren't something that had to be permanently on your body, then they're just not permanently on your body. Yeah, but what? I mean. The only reason they're permanently on your body is because we don't have the technology to not have them permanently on your yeah, body. Yeah, but I want them permanently on okay, your body. Okay, well, you can keep that option, but there should be options if you don't want we, them. What's next? You're going to say, like, we can, like, you'd have, like, a rent-a-kid that if there's, you have a kid, you can rent him a for a while. Child and, then, and getting a tattoo are different. How is having a tattoo and wearing a t-shirt the same? No, no, no. The only reason it's permanent is because we haven't found a way to not make it permanent. If, let's you say tattoos say came out in the children. first place. What? You could say that about having children. Well, we don't, we don't have the means of the technology. Hashtag rent a kid. That would be cool. And when they poop, you can just give them back. <laughs> rent a child. Come I'd be down for that. I'm just saying, the only reason tattoos are permanent is because they're permanent. If they weren't permanent, then they're not permanent. Yeah, you can buy, I believe you can, no, they make non-permanent tattoos. Like, the idea. You take 50 cents and you go to a, one of those coin slot things that they don't make no, anymore. But, and okay, you, I get and that you, you the, want it lasting longer than one shower. I understand that. I get why people would even maybe want it for life. But the option of not having it for life, if that, if that. Was it like when tattoos were first invented, if they were like, oh, well, we can do this, but it, but we can also, like, it can go away in six months, people would be doing the same thing. I don't know. Then they go, oh, maybe we could just get it again. Then you just get it again. Yeah, but. Or they'd that, be like, oh, maybe I'll change it up a little bit this time. You're going to sit for that long and then have them do it every six months? That would be miserable. Well, I don't know. Maybe not six months. Maybe you could do it for two years. Or you could just, if it's on there and they're like, oh, if we, you ever want to get rid of it, then this is how you do that. So you could have it for as long as you want and then get rid of it or not or just keep it. I don't know. I Yes, get, I win. No. I won that one. No. I feel good about that. Get get a tattoo or don't. I feel good about that one. You're either a beta or an alpha. That How does that mean anything? You're either a beta or you're an alpha. What, uh, so you're going back to Indonesia. Yes. Tell me about that. March 17th. The Ogden Theater, I'll be playing. I am going back to Indonesia. Going to be doing some diving. Doing some photography. For the dive shop. Yeah. With just your GoPro still. No, no, no. Are you getting, I'm getting housing? Oh, dude, I'm getting housing, bro. I'm telling you, I met so I met this photographer. His name's Soph. We were actually just chatting like two days ago. Um, 
shoots on a Sony A6500 Metamin Komodo when I was diving. Oh, nice. Um, was he had it underwater? Yeah, yeah, whole rig. Uh, but I'm getting the same. It's called Sea Frogs. I've actually there's a uh, I've been sending the guy emails, and I'm like, hey man, I want to send you pictures and you can give me a discount or something. And he just blows me off. Yep. So hey, Salted Paul. Well, when you are okay, when follow you, up. Hey, answer your email. When you are a camera equipment company, I'm guessing they've gotten offers for pictures and before. Send me. I'm your guessing they're not discount. low on pictures. Discount. That's like being like, hey, uh, you're a photographer. I'll give you some free pics if you take some free pics of me. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Discount. It's like going to Rockbrook Camera and being like, yo, you guys <laughs> need some content here because I maybe we can figure something out to get some they're free camera. Cam- they're not a camera company. They're an underwater housing company. I know, but it's a cam. Housing for what? For a camera. Oh, so they are a camera company. But I don't sell cameras. That's okay. We're working I'm, on I'm, I'm working kind on of, it. I'm Me kind and of, his name's Salted Paul. And are they expensive? Yeah. Like 500 bucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not cheap. But, yeah, I'm excited. Do uh, they got one for a Sony a7 III? Yes, they do. Oh, I see it. 500 bucks. Yeah. I'm Dang. Like, yeah, it can go 40 meters, this yeah. one. Which is like... That's normally the max limit that you would need if you're ever in looking into that, because most recreational so diving. So that's this zoom range between for 18 16 to 35. What would you? What would you? Limit I'm using my have? kit lens. I'm using my kit lens. The 15 to 16 to 50, 3.5 to 5.6. Very. Yeah, but doesn't that have a? Do they have one for that? Yeah, you get a zoom ring. It's like a, so you can zoom underwater. It's cool. Hmm. And I'm getting a strobe. Okay, nice. so you're gonna be there, and then how long will you be there? Be six months, full social cultural visa and visa, and then I will be coming back to the U.S. for Oliver's wedding and the homie Becker. So September. Uh, yeah, September is I'll be back. That's like, yeah, interesting. Okay. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, and then so I might I might go to Vietnam again in September. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, cause I think my visa might be up. And then, so I might go to Vietnam. I might come home. I don't know. All right, cool. But Let's, we can call that a uh, call that. A, we can wrap it up here. I like it. We'd like to thank. Um, follow the high tech hippie Matt Lena Ogden on Theater. all of his social medias. His what are, your social medias are the high tech hippie high yep. spelled H I. Yep, because H I G H was taken. So like hi hello. The high tech hippie. I'll link it in the show notes. Or the description depends on where you're getting this podcast from, and uh, make sure to follow the down to get weird stuff as well. I'm going to be coming out with a clips uh, YouTube page s- after wrestling season sometime, so it won't for sure be for like two or three weeks. But um, and then we'll have like little tidbits, so where you don't have to listen to this however long this podcast is, which is probably like three hours. You want to listen to the whole thing to just find out what's in it, you know, and get some get some tidbits here and there. So. Uh, all Meat the stuff. The link it up. Subscribe. Whatever that is. And uh, good show. Yeah. Can't See wait you. to be back. See you next time. Woo!